Nearly 80,000 fans settling into Miami's Orange Bowl on a rainy, windy Sunday afternoon to see firsthand which team is pro football's best. The Cowboys of Dallas, last year's champions, or the Steelers of Pittsburgh, this year's winningest team. Hello, everyone. Dick Enberg high atop the roof of the Orange Bowl. Welcome to Super Bowl 13. And three men eager to give you their account of the happenings of the rest of this afternoon are located off the facing of the second deck in our broadcast booth, Kurt Gowdy, John Brody, and Merlin Olson. Thank you very much, Dick. And you know, the more you probe the statistics, examine the late season surges, look at the coaching staffs, study the possible outcome, the more confused you can get. 13 is going to be a lucky number as far as I'm concerned. On paper, this is the best matchup in Super Bowl history. They won't be playing it on paper, but on prescription turf, but it certainly appears that way. And I'm proud to be working with two men who played with distinction for 32 years in pro football, never made it to the Super Bowl as players, but have made it as commentators. First of all, Mr. Merlin Olson. Thank you, Kurt. I think probably the only thing tougher than earning the right to play in this game is waiting for the game to be played. These players have been under the microscope now for two weeks. They were ready to play it last week. They had to wait. It's been awfully hard for them, and I'm sure they were ready to kick it off at 1 o'clock today. I got a lump in my stomach and my throat. I bet they've got a big one down there on the field, and they're ready to go. All right, Merlin was an all-pro all defensive player. John Brody, an all-pro quarterback. Your last-minute reflection, John. Well, I think, Kurt, when there's as much fanfare as has been attached to this ball game as there has, as much importance placed on the outcome of this game as there has, that the players have one ability that they need to have. That is uh, the, uh, the ability to go down on the field, put all of the fanfare out of their mind, execute like they have in practice. These guys have shown they can do that over the years. I think, and this is the reason I think, that this is going to be a high-scoring game and a close one just because of that ability. I've got a running gag with all my old pals at NBC. What about the ball game? And we're just about there. And here again, Dick Enberg. All right, Kurt Gowdy. And the players are ready, the gladiators, to enter this football arena. The Pittsburgh Steelers with Chuck Knoll have just taken the field. And by our audience account, it would appear the Steelers have stronger voices over the Cowboys here at the Orange Bowl this afternoon. In a moment, the Dallas Cowboys will make their entrance. And Bob Coffin, the public address announcer here at the Orange Bowl in Miami, has the official introductions of today's starting lineup. And now, let's meet the starting offensive lineups. First, the AFC champions, the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Pittsburgh offensive line. Right tackle, number 74, Ray Penny. Right guard, number 72, Jerry Mullins. Center, number 52, Mike Webster. Left guard, number 57, Sam Davis. Left tackle, number 55, John Cole. The Steelers receivers. Wide receiver, number 88, Lynn Swan. Tight end, number 84, Randy Grossman. Wide receiver, number 82, John Stallworth. The Pittsburgh backs. Running back, number 20, Rocky Blyer. Running back, number 32, Franco Harris. Quarterback number 12, Terry Bradshaw. Coach Chuck Knoll and the rest of the Steelers.
And now, the NFC champions, the Dallas Cowboys. The Dallas offensive line. Right tackle, number 70, Rayfield Wright. Right guard, number 64, Tom Rafferty. Center, number 62, John Fitzgerald. Left guard, number 68, Herbert Scott. Left tackle, number 67, Pat Donovan. The Cowboys receivers. Wide receiver, number 88, Drew Pearson. Tight end, number 89, Billy Joe Dupree. Wide receiver, number 80, Tony Hill. The Dallas Backs. Running back number 44, Robert Newhouse. Running back number 33, Tony Dorsett. Quarterback number 12, Roger Staubach. Coach Tom Landry and the rest of the Dallas Cowboys. Your attention, please, ladies and gentlemen. The National Football League was founded in 1920 by a group of men meeting in an automobile agency in Canton, Ohio. Entering the field from the northeast corner in a 1920 touring car to conduct the coin toss for Super Bowl 13 is the most famous of those men. Welcome, George Hallis. And now, referee Pat Haggerty meets the captains for today's game. They just brought Mr. Hallis out with his uh, official party in a 19. Today's captain for the AFC champion Pittsburgh Steelers, number 57, Sam Davis, number 58, Jack Lambert, and number 75, Joe Green. The captains for the NFC champion Dallas Cowboys. Number 12, Roger Staubach. Number 42, Randy Hughes. Number 50, Dee Dee Lewis. Number 79, Harvey Martin. And number 88, Drew Pearson. And now, for the official coin toss, here's referee Pat Haggerty. To our right. Hi, Mr. Lambert. Call the coin Jack, we've got please. some very interesting matchups in this ball game today, but maybe the most interesting will be Sam Davis against Randy White, their terrific defensive tackle. Sam is coming off perhaps his greatest year ever. And uh, L.C. Greenwood said Call to me the other day, you watched him block Randy White. The tri captains, co captains, whatever you want to call them, are out there. And George Hallis has tossed the coin out of the automobile. They are investigating. You have won the toss. You can kick or receive. The Cowboys receive. have won the toss. Let's go, you the take. Steelers get you the turn point. Around, please? The Steelers will take the win. Commemorative gold piece from the year 1920 used by George Hallis. Of course, as you heard, Dallas 1920, the, the formation receive. year of the National Football League. And the Patriarch himself, George Hallis, looked mighty fit. As Mr. Hallis offers his best wishes to both the Steelers and the Cowboys, let's meet the men who have been honored by the National Football League to blow the whistles and hopefully not have to drop too many flags in this Super Bowl. The introduction of the men who's honored today as the officials in Super Bowl 13. Pat Haggerty, referee. Art Demas, umpire. Jerry Bergman, headlinesman. Jack Petty, line judge. Pat Knight, back judge. Dean Look, side judge. Fred Swearinger, field judge. 
Chuck Heberling, alternate. Al Sabato, alternate. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to introduce the sportscaster who has covered more important television sports events than anyone in the history and more than anyone will ever report. He did the very first Super Bowl game. This is his record seventh Super Bowl. And despite what you may have read along the way, we've been friends long before Super Bowl one. A uh, good game to you all down there, men. Here's Kurt Gowdy. Thank you very much, Dickenberg. The Steelers now are spreading out. They're going to be kicking against a 15 to 20 mile an hour win. Roy Girilla, number 10, has had an erratic kicking year on field goals. When he hits it right on the kickoff, he can drive it to the goal line or in the end zone. I don't think he will against this win. And now the Cowboys are spreading out in receiving formation. And they're going to have Butch Johnson, number 86, and Larry Brinson, number 36, as their deep men. They're on the one-yard line. The Steelers, in drafting this year, went after improvement of their specialty team, and they did. Hunting teams, kicking teams, and the entire kicking game. And Super Bowl 13 is underway. The kick is hitting on the 12. Johnson's up with it to the 20, 25. And he goes down on his 28-yard line. He is hit down there by number 53, Dirk Winston. So we'll take a look now as the Cowboys go to the attack. And it's attack design. There they are. Starbuck, Newhouse, Dorsett, you know them all. There are the wide receivers. Hill, Pearson, Billy Joe Dupree. First down, Dallas on their 28. They move around a lot. They try and confuse you just for a split second. They're in the eye. They run out of the eye about 75% of the time. And they run it to Dorset. Dorset trying to get outside, 30, 35. We all know what a great back Dorset is, but I believe they're going to try to get the ball to him all they can today, pass receiving, running, because he can break a play at any time. Kurt, I think when you mention pass receiving, you may mention the key because everyone knows that Pittsburgh's defense is a lot of double coverage to the outside receivers, which is the personality of Rodgers throwing. If he can use uh, just a little bit of number 33 in, in uh, combination with 26, he can make his passing game go. They have second down and a yard. They're on their own 37, the Cowboys. A split backfield. Dorsett, he can get tough yardage. Look out. He bangs it through there. He nearly broke it, and Donnie Shell saved it. First down in Pittsburgh territory for the Cowboys. A big hole opened up inside, Kurt. And that's something no one expected to see that kind of room for Tony Dorsett and the Dallas Cowboys early in this game. Little delay, a little cutback. Furness trying to seal it off as they were stunning on the inside. And number 33, Dorsett, just popped it clean. Jack Lambert's usually the reason people don't run up the middle. That time he was handled pretty well by the offensive left guard. Do that, you're going to make it tough. First down, Cowboys on the Steeler 47. No score, we're early, they're in the I formation. Staubach, the Newhouse, Newhouse jammed up at the line of scrimmage. Robert Newhouse, who broke a bone in his leg earlier and was out of action, now starts his Super Bowl 13. And Jack Lambert made the tackle on him. The offensive line of the Dallas Cowboys are supposed to have their hands full, and certainly Pittsburgh's defense has been tough on everyone. Not, not anyone, uh, during the last part of the season, able to get over 100 yards rushing. But the Cowboys finding an early opening here. If they could keep that up, they sure can open it up for Staubach to throw the ball. Dungy has come in. Tony Dungy, number 21. And going out is number 51, Lauren Taves, a linebacker. So they have five secondary backs on the field for the Steelers. Yeah, yeah, Second down, yeah. 10. Cowboys. The pitch coming wide. Look at that. Breaking it down the sideline. Dorsett having a field day early here in the first period. He's having a field day, Kurt, but he's getting outside, which very few people thought he would be able to do just because of the linebacker play for Pittsburgh and the quick force of their safety men. However, their offensive line has just annihilated both the left side and the right side the first time this group's had the ball. That could make it a very easy, easy day for a running back. 
Tony Hill is out. Jackie Smith's in there. They have a double tight end set up now. Herbert Scott has been doing some tremendous blocking at left guard for the Cowboys. Mike Wagner is uh, back in for Steelers. There is Pearson going in motion on first down. Dorset gives it, fumbles, and the Steelers recover. A trick play. The Steelers are on it. John Banasak, number 76, recovers. Kurt, it looked like a perfect time to call the play. As it developed, it looked to be well disguised. However, a little slip in the handoff. I think Staubach was the most surprised man in the house when his receiver came around. He didn't have the ball. It was, it was sitting in the middle of the field. None of the offensive people were able to move to it. Cowboys like to finesse you, but their finesse cost them an opportunity to score early. A 38-yard drive, Stahl. Look at this play again. Staubach pitching to Dorset. Just Pearson dropped the ball. Fumbled. And he was trying to get it to stall back down the field to Dupre. In motion is Rocky Blyer. Franco Harris trying to sweep. They contain him and they knock him down at the 45. The way to stop Franco Harris is to string him out. Don't let him get out there and cut back on you. He's a great cutback artist. Franco Harris certainly would like to have some opportunities to see the kind of holes that Tony Dorsett got early. And both teams kind of sparring with their running game, something we expected them to do. They want to see if they can open it up because if they can run the football, then they can pass the football. And both these quarterbacks would like to throw it today. It is second down 12 for the Steelers. They're on their own 45. No score. 12 20 to play in the first period. A slot left formation. And the Cowboys jam them up. Randy White, number 54. Franco Harris carried the ball, backed up by Bob Brunig, the middle linebacker. Let's set up this Dallas front four. First, let's look at the replay. Randy White, number 54, is wearing a cast on his left hand. Broke his thumb in the game against the Rams. You see him getting off Sam Davis's block, able to slip inside and get a hold of Franco Harris. Some fine play from the very agile tackle. Now they have the prevent pass defense in. Mike Hegman and Randy Hughes are in there. Six secondary men. D.D. Lewis has gone out. Bradshaw fades. A big rush on him. He throws it. And it is complete to Stallworth, who hung on to it at the 40. They had a blitz against Bradshaw. He got it away, and Stallworth made an amazing catch. I tell you, when you say an amazing play, Stall they've always complimented the, the wide receivers for Pittsburgh. They say they're blind going into the middle of the field. It's like some say they could catch a BB in the dark. I don't know about that, but when you're running with one thought in mind, as both Swan and Stallworth do, your chances of keeping an interception from happening give Bradshaw a chance to throw the ball in the middle knowing at least he's going to get a piece of it. He had to pick himself off the ground to see whether that was completed. And it's obvious they're going to try and put all the heat they can with blitzes. Rushing Bradshaw today. He's back rolling. Flips. Sideline. Out of bounds to Stallworth. No good. <laughs> Stallworth was covered over there by Aaron Kyle. That little move Stallworth made was pretty good. It went for no gain, but anybody that can come down that's an athlete of that caliber, uh, you've got to keep putting the ball out there. I think that's one of the keys to the game, too, John. We're going to see a lot of first down passing. You saw it right there. We're going to see a lot of play action because Dallas does not get a quick pass rush out of that flex defense. Merlin, these two teams are so good defensively. Don't you think they're going to have to open the throttle and do everything they can? I think they both accepted that fact. We saw an evidence of that with that flea flicker set up earlier for, for the Cowboys, Kurt. Second down, 10. Rocky Blyer has the ball. Blyer is hit first by number 31, Benny Barnes, the left cornerback. And he rode him out of bounds. Short yardage. A light rain is falling. This is a marvelous turf here, though. It has about a foot and a half of sand underneath it. That's the Steeler backfield. And the personality has changed. The people haven't. Terry Bradshaw is the key this year. It had been Franco Harris and Rocky Blyer, a couple of great backs who were helped so much by Terry during the year. I mean, he's thrown the ball so well. I don't think I've seen a quarterback have that kind of year in the last six or seven. There are the receivers. It's third and eight. Mike Hegman, Randy Hughes in. Six secondary players for the Cowboys. Bradshaw. To the sideline, it's complete at the 28-yard line oh, oh. to Randy Grossman, the tight end, and Bradshaw really threaded that ball. That's the kind of pass very few quarterbacks will even try. He went down 
as Grossman made his move, Charlie Waters had him covered like a blanket. Watch it. Grossman gets behind Charlie Waters. Waters is shadowing him. Just as he comes out of his break, the ball is on its way. Waters is in great position, but he's too late. As you said it, there aren't many quarterbacks with an arm strong enough to throw that pass. They don't even try it. Harry Bradshaw led the entire league in touchdown passes this year. 28 in the regular season, four in the postseason play. 32 all together. He's going to throw again. He's lobbing a deep. Stallworth! Touchdown, is it? Touchdown! Stallworth! What a move, Kurt. What a move. Aaron Powell's the man responsible. However, he did have help deep. Maybe it enhanced him to play Stallworth a little bit closer than he normally would. But Stallworth went down to the point of attack. As he did so, perfect fake by Bradshaw. Kyle looking in the backfield. He was just untouched. As you see, Terry saw him so far open. He just lobbed the ball out here. Everybody's in pursuit. Cliff Harris is late. He beat Kyle. Six to nothing, Pittsburgh. You might have noticed right at the end of the play, he only got one foot in bounds, John, but they ruled that he was driven out by the two defenders. Jarrell has missed only one extra point all year. He's kicked 44 out of 45. The punter, Colquitt, a rookie, will hold. And that kick is up, and it is good. Well, uh, interesting start. Just three unbelievable catches by John Stallworth already in this football game. Watch the concentration. The ball hung just a little bit. Stallworth up. Does not even care if they're going to wrap him. Watch as they drive him out of bounds right there. He would not cough that football. Well, you double swan. What do you do with this man? He caught 10 against Denver in the playoffs to set an all-time playoff record. Two superb receivers on the team with the black shirts and... Pearson and Hill are great over on the other side. You'll be hearing from them. Here's the kickoff, riding high. It is coming to Brinson on the 14. Out to the 25, and he's down on his 27-yard line. And he's hit down there by number 56, Robin Cole, the linebacker, and also by Rick Moser. Now let's take a look at the Steelers on defense. They we play didn't, a poor we didn't have line. a Excuse me, Kurt. We didn't even have much of a chance to introduce them to you before. They had their hands full early, and we uh, let you watch some of their problems. Banizak, Joe Green, Steve Furness, and L.C. Greenwood, a fine, strong defensive line. They've got some of the best linebackers around. You'll be seeing more from them during the day. Dwight White has replaced Banizak. Now they alternate them at right end. Dallas ball, first down under 28. Flip backfield. Dabach. Ball down. Timing's destroyed. He got it away. Slipped and fell. A light rain is falling. He fell back on his drop. That was either either a mistake on Strawback's part or Dorsett's. I kind of feel it was Tony's, but I'm not sure. Sometimes you forget there's a there's a trail back coming across. They ran into each other. One knocked Strawback down. He was fortunate that the pass rush did not allow anyone through. Look at this. Now you know Tony's trying to get out of the way. Has nowhere to go. I kind of think he forgot his assignment. Second down, 10. Cowboys in their 28. Pearson to the right. Tony Hill to the left. They're going to run it. On the draw. Woo, down there. Tony Dorsett hit by Jack Ham, who many call the best outside linebacker in pro football. Lauren Taves assisted him. And let's take a look at the linebackers for the Steelers. Well, you'll see a lot of Lauren Taves, also Robin Cole, but the two all pros, Jack Lambert and Jack Ham, are absolutely awesome. Merlin said, you'll see a lot of them. You may see a whole lot of them. Dallas Cowboys may see more than they want of them. There are a lot of talented football players on the field. That's the secondary. We'll get to them later. Right now, Preston Pearson's in the game. He's a receiving halfback. They really have three wide receivers in. Tony Dungy's in the secondary. Shotgun. The pass right down the middle, and they hit it to Butch Johnson. He was wide open. Butch Johnson wrestled around by Ron Johnson. Johnson against Johnson. Roger Staubach has gone from the shotgun. He's the only quarterback I've ever seen effectively utilize it. And when a guy's in the shotgun, the first second or so, he has to put his attention on the snapback from center. It means to Pittsburgh, let's get to him quick. See if we can't rattle him. However, it leaves some vulnerability in the middle of the field. Strawback got the ball. Tell you, he found Johnson quick, and uh, that's the way to pick up big yards. 
An all out blitz on that one John and they left Johnson one on one on Butch Johnson pretty difficult to uh, to cover that kind of receiver when a quarterback has time to get it off as Staubach did. Both teams are gambling on defense. Staubach sets them down. First down Cowboys on the Pittsburgh 42. Steelers are ahead 7 nothing. Eight minutes to play in the first period. Dorsett cutting back at the 40 and is crashed down at the 39 yard line by Donnie Shell who is a real hitter as a strong safety free agent out of South Carolina State Cowboys love to run at you out of that eye formation and they love to feature the running a number 33 Tony Dorsett out of that eye he has such great lateral quickness and he can spot those openings up inside you give him a little opening as he strings out along that line and he'll just go right up through it Tom Landry wants to get the ball to Dorsett today Dorsett's already gained 46 yards in the first period second down seven for Dallas Pearson in motion. Dabak, rush on him. He's hit. And he goes down. Page got to him first and kept after him. And then Steve Forness took him down. Forness the right tackle. They had a blitz on first from the right linebacker. Steelers don't usually blitz you that much, but they've thrown out the book and they're coming after Staubach right now. You see number 51, Lauren Taves, and watch Staubach duck underneath him. But he can't elude number 64, Steve Furness, who pulls him down. I'll tell you, as he did get out, had he been free, he still had no one open. Donnie Shell just covered uh, Billy Joe Dupree like a blanket. Could be the key to a lot of this afternoon. They take the tight end out. Dupree, they put Bush Johnson in, Preston Pearson in, third and 19. Everybody looking for the pass now here in the Orange Bowl. Steelers ahead, 7-0. Cowboys off the shotgun. Dabak looks that field over. He's got time. And he's down. He's hit by number 78, Dwight Mad Dog White. That's the second sack for the Steelers. And they sack Dabak seven times in the 76 Super Bowl. All right. You, give, you know, you give credit to the defensive line. Dwight White was the only man anywhere near Dabak. However, it was due to the outstanding coverage. And the combination of coverage in that situation, Straubach had four or five seconds to throw the ball, had no one open. Not only did White go by Pat Donovan, his tackle, he also got by Dorsett, who was the pickup man. And finally, as you said, because Staubach could not throw the ball, he got him and sacked him. Punt formation, Danny White, Theo Bell's deep. He had a good run back day against Houston. A driving spiral with a win. Theo Bell takes it on his 18. Robbering block, and he runs it back to his 30, a 12 yard return. Randy Hughes made the tackle. We're going to be back to action here at the Orange Bowl. Hollywood Henderson has been talking all week about what he was going to do to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Watch number 53, Dirk Winston, say hello to Hollywood Henderson. <laughs> and I tell you, he went over and was welcomed by his teammates. Hello. However, Merlin, as you mentioned, Hollywood does talk a lot. He seems to back it up on the football field. Tom Landry said, complimenting you, Thomas, is like putting a fire out with gasoline. Uh, <laughs> he does back up what he says. Pittsburgh on their 31st down. Blyer and Harris behind Bradshaw. Franco Harris outside to the 35, is knocked down. On the 35 by Bob Bruning, the middle linebacker, aided by Aaron Kyle, number 25, the right cornerback. Bruning from Arizona State. Steelers offensive line, of course, working very hard to free up uh, Franco, give him a little running room. And early in this ball game, uh, I think the, th the thing that surprised me most, John, is that both teams seem to be able to run the ball. I didn't think that was going to happen today. Second down five for the Steelers on their 35. They're ahead seven nothing. Five and a half to play in the first period. That's off on a rollout. Throws to the sideline. Nearly picked off there by Cliff Harris. They had Lynn Swan double team. And it's interesting to see that Harris came over to help out. And they really don't like to do that with their safety men, the Cowboys. No, Kurt, but you do have to give up something. That time, Benny Barnes just played as, as close as he could to Swan. Now, you know, Harris gets by because he's as smart as he is. He knows Bradshaw would love to go to Swan whenever he can if he's got Benny Barnes up, stuffing him while he can. 
Swan's going to get free sometime. When he does, Harris wants to be there. All right, they're looking for pass. They have Randy Hughes in, a fifth defensive back, and an extra linebacker, Mike Hegman. Third down, five Steelers on their own 35. Bradshaw, time, right over the middle, complete. Franco Harris into Dallas territory at the Dallas 43. And Bradshaw is hot in the Super Bowl. And Bradshaw will stay hot if he gets patterns run the way Franco Harris ran that one on Mike Hickman. He was one-on-one -on -one with a linebacker. When you get a chance to, to work on a linebacker with no help outside or inside, he just gave a little outside fake cut right underneath and picked up a big gain, and Pittsburgh's on the move again. And the other thing he had was time to throw that football, and they're doing an effective job of holding Randy White out of there. I think maybe that cast is bothering him, Kurt. Bradshaw, four out of six. He had all the time against Houston. You cannot give him time anymore. He's become a very patient man. Here he is on a drop and a play action. He throws it out to Swan. Swan has a first down. Swan nailed against the sideline by Benny Barnes. What a passing attack. Right, left, down the middle, and right now they're shredding the Dallas secondary. Well, they're able to get one-on-one -on -one coverage. They got it on Mike Higman the time before. This time they got Benny Barnes one-on-one -on -one with Lynn Swan. Very tough to cover the wide receivers or even the offensive backs without help somewhere. Sam Davis is doing quite a job holding Randy White out of there. That's the big matchup, a critical matchup for Pittsburgh. Steelers first down on the Dallas 30. Steelers ahead, 7-0, 428 in the first quarter. Blitz is on. It's intercepted at the 15. D.D. Lewis at the 30. They had the blitz on, and Bradshaw threw a bad pass. That's the first turnover by the Steelers. Dallas has had a turnover. And D.D. Lewis comes to the bench for congratulations. Well, and he deserves some congratulations. A lot of pressure right there on the Dallas defense. They're able to come up with a turnover, turn the Steelers away. If the Steelers go up with a second TD here, they can almost put it out of reach. D.D. Lewis, Merlin Olsen just pointed out that's only the third linebacker interception of the entire season for the Cowboys. 32 yards. Return. Terry Bradshaw upset over that one. Newhouse, Dorsett, the running back. Kabach is going to put veteran Jackie Smith over on the right. They try the quick hitter over right tackle. Newhouse carries, and he is stopped. Short game. Joe Green hit him first. Helped by Jack Ham. Dallas offense, uh, the running game, is basically trying to uh, attack outside. But they got up the middle on that one, did not make much. The Goodyear Blimp Mayflower, the newest and largest in the world, shooting these overhead aerials. Captain Mike Fitzpatrick of Newport, Rhode Island. Second down, seven. Dallas, just short of their 40. Jackie Smith in motion. The pitch is to Newhouse. He's being chased. Lambert! What a charge by Jack Lambert, who led the Steelers this year with 125 tackles. Jack Lambert's the emotional leader of that black shirt of defense and a very quick linebacker at getting the good reaction, the good jump on the ball, and he knows how to put it back on the ground. You know, he's very smart. You don't fool him many times. Uh, you know, for a few times, Dorsett got outside. Now they're giving Newhouse a chance. He slipped right underneath the pulling guard, brought down the ball carrier. It may be tough to go outside for a while. Newhouse doesn't quite have the speed of Dorsett. He paid the price on that one. All right, they take out the tight end. They put in Butch Johnson, Preston Pearson. It's the shotgun. They've got all their good wide receivers in the game now on third and seven. Zabach pass, no good. Lieutenant for Preston Pearson, Ham. All right, Jack, Jack Green, too. You know, when you put the burden on a linebacker, Generally, he can't handle a fine offensive halfback that's a good receiver. They put Ham feel very com comfortable covering him, covering the Preston Pearson. He did it very well, forced Roger to throw it where he didn't want to. They look like they were bumping, running the outside receivers, John. They were. They're challenging him out there. There is Danny White. He could play first-team quarterback on most squads in the National Football League. How long he's going to be happy to be a backup man, I don't know. And there's Theo Bell to return. Kicking with the 20 mile an hour wind. Hoists it up there to the sideline. 
and it takes a Pittsburgh bounce and is out of bounds between the 35 and 40 yard line of Pittsburgh and White did not like his punt. Remember Sports World on NBC next Sunday. The Steelers, the best record in pro football this year. They won 16 out of 18. They've won their last seven in a row. They have a first down on their own 38. Notice how they run to the left. They have a gaping hole open for Franco Harris. They're a left-handed running team like the Oakland Raiders because they usually put the tight end on the right and Harris has less people over in the left so he can cut back on them. Down in the middle of that line, they're really banging on Martin, number 79. You see Dee Dee Lewis coming inside, a little stunt between the two of them. Good reaction from the offensive line of the Pittsburgh Steelers. They sealed the linebacker out, opened a hole, and Franco knew what to do with it. Second down, a yard to go for Pittsburgh. On their own 47. Trying to search for that first down. Flag goes down, the first one of the game. And by the way, in 1976, Dick Enberg, before the game, talked about, we hope we don't have a lot of flags. There were only, that's a holding against Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh did not have one penalty in the Super Bowl 10 against Dallas. Dallas had only two for 10 yards. This is the first flag of the game. It'll go against the Steelers. And a tie. And you never like to have that kind of mistake, though. You put yourself in great position. It's a first down almost at midfield. And suddenly they're marking it off. It's going to be second and about 12 yards to go. Disastrous. Holdings on Sam Davis, the left guard. He's got his hands full down there, Kurt. Look inside. You'll see Sam Davis right there holding Randy White. Now the flag came in late. Could have been that uh, the referee uh, watched the way he pulled him away from that uh, running back, kept him off of him. Coming on the field is number 58, Mike Hegman. Going out is Larry Cole. They're getting an extra uh, linebacker in there. Dave Stalls has gone in. Landry is changing up his defense a bit. Well, there's the defensive line for the Cowboys. And uh, Randy White, as we said, you can see the cast on his left hand, broken thumb. He and Cole on the inside. Harvey Martin and, and White on that right side accounted for 32 sacks between them. That's a very impressive total for two guys. Second down, 11. Harris again running left. Franco is brought down by Aaron Kyle. Kyle weighs 185. Franco weighs 225. Franco in postseason games has led all rushers 11 out of 13 times. We've given a lot of credit to the Pittsburgh Steeler linebackers, but the Dallas Cowboys aren't without some good ones themselves. Brunig is only the third middle linebacker to play for these Cowboys. Henderson you saw earlier. He's been the he's been the noisy one this week and Dee, Dee Lewis on the other side working very hard. The two safeties Harrison Waters outstanding football player John I think you'd agree with that. I think most everybody would. <laughs> Third down and six. Look out from behind. Bumble. Dallas Hester. He's hit from behind. Ed Jones nailed him. And uh, Harvey Martin nailed him from behind and Ed Jones has recovered the fumble. That's the second Steeler turnover. There's Ed too tall. Okay, both of them responsible to Bradshaw. This time he was trying to do a little too much with a bad play. I think if one thing epitomizes Terry's play over the year, he has been so successful, sometimes he's made a bad situation a good one. This time in this sort of a football game, you want to make sure that when you when the gates are closing, you don't leave yourself an opening. I think he did a little unnecessarily here. He's trying to get away, do something well. The ball got hit. Big defensive play, though, as Harvey reached around and batted that ball loose. First down, Dallas, Pittsburgh's 41. One minute to play in the first period. Pittsburgh ahead, 7-0. Staubach on a straight handoff. Newhouse. And Newhouse piled up in the middle. L.C. Greenwood, the left end, and uh, Steve Furness. There's the man that just recovered the fumble. Ed Tall jones 
Bradshaw talking to Chuck Knoll. You know, I want to ask Merlin something. Off, uh, to me, a great defense is one that when, the te when your own team gets a turnover, you can hang in there and not let anything break down because so many touchdowns happen after turnovers. I don't think either Dallas or Pittsburgh allow that to happen very often. No, that's because of their experience. Uh, you go on that field, you suck it up a little bit more when they got a turnover. You know Staubach's going to go deep on you. Second down, nine. Cowboys on the Steeler 40. Pearson in motion. Play action pass. There it goes deep to Pearson. And it is no good. He was defended by Donnie Shell. Pearson nearly making a miraculous catch in the end zone. And Donnie Shell made an awfully good defensive play because it looked to me as if Pearson had dissected the defense. Staubach threw the ball at just about the right time. Was not able to hit him on the money, but it looked like the play may be good enough. He got Shell's back turn to the ball. When you're in that position, you're really up for grabs. A guy like Drew Pearson is going to come down with quite a few of those. I've got to credit Donnie Shell. You can see he doesn't like it. He finds Pearson a little later than he would like to. However, makes good recovery and keeps him from scoring. That's great ball reaction. Steve Furness is out. Dennis Winston is in. There's Donnie Shell. Butch Johnson's come on to replace Dupree. They have the fleet wide receivers in again. It's the shotgun on third and nine. And a big rush is on. He lets it go. Tony Hill at the 20. He's in. Touchdown, Tony Hill. Okay, Kurt, that was a blitz. They've been burned twice on blitzes. That was no exception. Stallback was the hero on both occasions. You see Tony Hill on Donnie Shell. He's all alone with him all over the field. Stallback threw the ball before Tony Hill even made his break. He was forced to. They communicated perfectly, and the score is almost tied. One kick will do it. And this pass comes as time ran out in the first period. He can really tightrope that sideline, Tony Hill, a second-year player. He came so fast that they traded Golden Richards on to the Bears to make way for Hill, who's going to be a, a great pro star. And Mel Blunt, who was deeper than uh, Tony Hill, had his back to the quarterback, playing man-to-man, -man, corralling his receiver. Never did see Hill until he went by him into the end zone. Well, it's survival time when you get one-on-one -on -one with some guy and you're in a blitz situation. Septian only missed one point out of 47. Charlie Waters will hold. It is a tie at the end of the first period. And what a first quarter here in Super Bowl number 13. We'll be back with the second quarter of today's game after these messages from your local station. Kicking off now, Septian. The kick is a shorty bounding around. Anderson, the rookie, has it. Reversing his field, loses ground, and they finally bring him down. He lost four or five yards trying to <laughs> reverse his field. He's finally tackled by Tom Randall. Kurt, the uh, Dallas Cowboys have been kind of hard on Steeler records. Back in 75, the Steelers had done the same thing, had held their opponents scoreless throughout the season. And in the Super Bowl of 75, Dallas scored in the first quarter. Here they are again. They come scoreless through the whole year. Not scoreless, but they at least no touchdowns allowed in the first quarter until today, and the record disappears to the same Dallas Cowboys. Well, if you want to go by past records, the team scoring the first points has won 10 out of the 12 previous Super Bowls. Pittsburgh scored first, but now Dallas has come back, and Bradshaw sets them down for a first down on their own 26. First play of the second quarter. Blair is off in motion. That pass is he played. That he ball. caught that ball. Randy Grossman, the little tight end at 215 pounds, his second reception of the game. And, you know, Kurt, people were so concerned when Benny Cunningham went down. Now he is going to be a great tight end, but their effectiveness has not changed since Grossman has come into the lineup. He's excellent going into the secondary, beating linebackers. He makes a lot of bad balls look good, and he just did it on this occasion. Randy Grossman, a basketball player at Temple. On the 32-yard line, or 37-yard uh, line of Pittsburgh, first down. Tie game, 7-all. Michael Harris, getting outside to the 40. Ridden out of bounds by Bruning, and Ed 
Tall Jones. Well, Franco starting to pick up some yardage. Shows you how quick Jones is. He chased him from left to right. This telecast presented by authority of the National Football League, intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the National Football League is prohibited. It is now on the 44-yard line of the Pittsburgh Steelers, second down, three to go. Let's check Franco's rushing yardage. He has 27 yards. Tony Dorsett has 46 yards rushing. Harris again. Ed Jones hits him there. He might have picked up a yard. Too tall at 6'9", was standing there and said, uh-uh. Very tough to go against that Dallas flex defense, especially for the Steelers who love to do their trapping, and it's hard to trap that defense. Too tall just slid inside, almost like a linebacker, sliding back inside away from Grossman, who's trying to seal him off, and made the stop, kept him short of the first down. They're bringing on Larry Bethea, rookie, number 76. Now he comes back out. They couldn't get him on the field in time. Third down, one. Harris has the first down. Franco Harris hitting inside. D.D. Lewis stopped him. Sam Davis opened the way. Franco Harris, fifth leading rusher of all time. Great money back is the best description you can make. Kurt, I was just going to say that. You're taking the words right out of my mouth. But if you had one back to run short yardage for you, I think I might grab Franco Harris, especially in a big ball game. Steelers on their 48. First down. They've gone to the running game now. Now they switch. Quick flip. Incomplete. I want to tell you, the... Cowboys led the National Football League in getting to the quarterback this year, and they're putting more and more pressure on Bradshaw now as this game is progressing. And they did put pretty good pressure on Bradshaw, but Grossman had a chance to really manipulate behind the linebackers. The linebacker play by Brunig on that particular occasion was outstanding, and they had a little miscommunication. I tried to get it off to Randy Grossman, as you said, but uh, Randy just unable to get himself in the right position. We're looking at Randy White here. They've done a good job. Sam Davis had his hands full, but has done a good job of passing him off and getting a little help by his friends on the other side of the line. They put their wide receivers on the left side in the slot. Second down, 10 for the Steelers. Play action pass. Bradshaw throw on the run, maybe. It's out, and it's nearly intercepted by Charlie Waters, number 41. Charlie, a nine-year veteran. He and uh, Cliff Harris are called the two best safeties on one team in football. Okay, we're giving you the wide shot. And Terry Bradshaw, when he comes back, I think uses his, his, his athletic ability to give himself enough time to try and catch Swan coming all the way across the field. We're watching Grossman. That ball was actually intended for Lynn Swan coming across. Good linebacker play kept him from receiving the ball. Take a look at Lynn. He comes down. He's supposed to be hit here. If Terry had been able to stay in the pocket, he might have been able to throw it. Benny Barnes is in pretty good position coverage-wise. Linebacker makes the play. And if you're wondering why there wasn't a penalty, it's because the ball had already been hit by a defensive man. Third down, 10. Steeler on their 48. Fumble. Bradshaw has it. Oh, is he hit. Thomas Henderson up with it. Going in, going in with it, number 58, Mike Hegman, and it is a recovered fumble. Henderson jarred it loose from Bradshaw, and going in with it, Mike Hegman from Tennessee State, a reserve linebacker. And I think, Merlin, that two things happened. I think Bradshaw's hurt a little bit on his left shoulder. They stood him up, kind of caved him in, both of them, took the ball away before he was able to get down to the ball. He made a pretty good recovery to get a piece of it, but you can see Henderson's holding him up. Hagman takes the ball away, and I don't think Terry's getting up very quick. Henderson just stripped his arms back, and Hegman stole the football from him. Now, that's great play. That's the kind of big plays you're going to need to win this football game. Okay, let's look at Bradshaw. That's the real concern as far as Pittsburgh's concerned. He had a hold of his elbow coming off the field. It was his left one, but it's not a minor problem. Cowboys score, 12.08 to play in the half. They're in the lead. Kepion's kick is good. And Dallas, on a stunning recovery, Bradshaw shaken up. And that's the big question now. Can Terry Bradshaw come back and operate with full efficiency? 
third turnover already against the Steelers. And let's take a look at it again, gentlemen. Let's go back and watch the play. I don't think, I think the fact that Bradshaw dropped that football and picked it up really shook him up. He never quite got his bearings again. Henderson really has his shoulders and arms. He's pulling him out right there. You see the ball just stolen right there by Mike Kegman. And I think, go ahead, John, you well, saw something. No, I'll just tell you, he hit his elbow on the ground. That could be a jam shoulder, could be a slight separation. We're not going to try to play doctor, but it's certainly a problem for Terry right now. Well, if Bradshaw cannot continue, then that really raises some interesting questions for the Steelers one more time because there's the football popping loose. Bradshaw does a good job of getting it back, but watch him carefully as he goes to the ground here. Yes, yeah, you're right, John. Had his arm pit behind him. Well, if there's one guy that will come back, I'd say he's probably as tough a quarterback as there's ever played this game. And if he can come back, he'll be there. The Steelers scored first. A pass to Stallworth. 28 yards, 9.47 to go in the first period. Dallas tied it in the last play on a pass to Tony Hill of the first period. And now Dallas has jarred the ball loose, come up with it, and Hegman ran it in for the touchdown. They're kicking off to Larry Anderson, deep. Anderson is going to ground it for the touchback. The initial reading from the Pittsburgh bench, Terry Bradshaw is all right and will be able to come back into action. You see them congratulating Ra back. Raphael Septien. He really got his foot into that football. Pins the Steelers back on the 20. Well, now they, were, they, they call them the dirty towels. If we look to the far side, there they are. <laughs> the dirty towels. Dirty or the, the terrible? <laughs> the terrible towel. Okay, terrible. terrible towel. Well, they, get, they got kind of dirty in that game last uh, two weeks ago I, when I it got wet. First down. Pittsburgh on their 20. They're trailing for the first time in the game. Bradshaw to Franco Harris, who dumped. He's hit on the 22-yard line by Harvey Martin, who last year, along with Randy White, was a co-most valuable player of this game. Second down, eight. Pittsburgh on their own 22. We pause briefly. We will pause in a minute. Quick look at uh, number 75, Martin, and Cove there. Harvey Martin keeping good position on the line of scrimmage and able to get a shot on number 32, Franco Harris. Second down eight. Steelers on their 22. They have the wind in this quarter. Franco Harris, boy, that's, that is rough yardage to get. Larry Cole took him at the 25. Now we're going to pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. Kurt Gowdy, John Brody, Merlin Olson, Dick Enberg again from the Orange Bowl. The situation, third and five for Pittsburgh on their 25. And ahead of this game, the Dallas Cowboys, 14 to seven. 10.40 to go in the first half. Lock right, Bradshaw, we'll see how he throws. He's got his man stalwart. He's at the 40, 45, 50, 45, 40. He's gone. He's at the 20, 15, and he's in for the touchdown. No flags are down. It's a touchdown all the way, 75 yards. Kurt, I think you set it up about as well as anyone. When Bradshaw goes back to pass, you say, let's see how he throws. I'd say he made the answer pretty clear. He put it right on the numbers to Stallworth. Stallworth beat Randy Hughes in a one-on-one -on -one situation. When he did so, and we've seen a lot of one-on-one -on -one situations, I think, Merlin, is because they have to try and get to both passes. I think both teams are trying for the big play defensively, and it kills them here because they don't get to him. He gets it away, and then Stallworth just uses his great ability to break it loose, to get this game back to within one point of even, and this has become a game of big plays. Stallworth has now three catches for 115 yards. Bradshaw, oh, they're, they're over him after he was injured. He came right back in and got this thing tied up with the extra point. 14-14, 10-25 to go in the first half. All right, simple little pattern. It's not, it's not one that, that has a lot of beauty in its execution, but very effective. 
As Bradshaw hits Stallworth real quick, you see him run through a maze of players. When he finally gets past Randy Hughes, he's all alone. It's long gone. It's tied 14 up. There he is, John Stallworth. Let's look at the key block on this play. That scored the touchdown, which is the longest in Super Bowl history for a pass play. There is Swan taking Benny Barnes out of the play. That's all you need to do. Get him out of there for a split second. Here's a kickoff by Jarrilla to either Butch Johnson or Larry Brinson. It is coming to Butch Johnson. 20, 25, and he goes down on his 31-yard line. And he's hit there by Rick Moser, a reserve running back of the Steelers who plays on the kickoff team. The word from the uh, bench, uh, Kurt, is that Bradshaw has bruised his left shoulder. Some of you may have seen him taking some ammonia and sniffing salts right just before we broke away. Actually, what he what he may be doing is still clearing the cobwebs. He's on the bench now. You see the trainer working with him on the sideline. He's a tough kid. You said it, John. If you're going to have one guy come back, it's Terry Bradshaw. First down, Dallas on her 32. Game tied, 14 all. Dabach, the new house, who's hit. And right in there, passing on him, number 78, John Banaschak. Eastern Michigan, a free agent. He has taken the starting right in position away from Dwight White, but White still plays a lot. They alternate. Well, Banaszak uh, plays like one of the great ones now, but not like a free agent, and he did earn that starting job. You saw why there as he got out and stripped Newhouse down. Newhouse, Newhouse doesn't look to me like he's come back to his old form after that leg injury. Well, and I think those black shirts have something to do with it. <laughs> he might have a point there, John. Now look at this full house now. Now they hop out of it. Second down, 15 to go. The toss. Dorsett is in good, and he's down. It's the Steelers now who have taken over the momentum. That's Jack Dam, number 59. When the, when the Steelers are playing their best, Jack Jack Ham's making the big plays, Merlin. Number 59, Jack Ham. I still believe at his position, the finest linebacker in football. And what he does here is just seals the play to the outside, strings it out. Dorsett looked back. He wanted to cut. But what did he see? More black shirts. He went to the ground. All right. They put Butch Johnson in, 86. Preston Pearson, 26. Take the tight end out, Dupree. They've got the fleet receivers with the good hands in there now on third and 18. Staubach off the shotgun. He fumbles the ball. Pittsburgh. Dallas recovers it. Pittsburgh had a great opportunity to come up with that ball and let it get away from him. Joe Green caused the fumble on the rush. Tom Rafferty, the right guard, recovered for Dallas. And it looked like late, Merlin. I'm not sure, but the Banaszak had a chance to recover the ball, tried to make a big play out of it rather than recover it. In doing so, lost it. Dallas still has possession. Joe Green gets a great rush and just strips the football. We saw that happen to Bradshaw early. Right there, Furness, number 64, you're right. Wanted to take it in. He didn't get it, and he cost Pittsburgh a chance at a great turnover. Tom Rafferty alertly pounced on the football for the Cowboys. Boy, they're lucky they got out without turning that football over. Andy White in punt formation. Theo Bell is on his own 45. White against the wind, wobbles it. Bell feels it on his 49, 50, goes down on the Dallas 48-yard line. And he's hit there by number 56, Thomas Henderson. The Muhammad Ali now of pro football, <laughs> Thomas Henderson. Don't call me Tom, it's Thomas. At the start of this game, you heard some voices. They were mysterious to us. They were voices of the Pittsburgh uh, radio announcing team who are on the same frequency that the officials' uh, mic is on down in the field when you hear the discussion of the penalty. We have no control over it, so if it happens again, you'll know what it's all about. And right now, the Pittsburgh Steelers are on the Dallas 48-yard line with a first down. This is the first time in Super Bowl history that four touchdowns have been scored in the first half. Bradshaw, play action pass. And he gets it away. Lynn Swan, 30. 25, Swan's down on the 22. He's hit by Charlie Waters. Lynn Swan was the most valuable player of the 76 game. We mentioned this may be a slam-bam affair, Merlin, and we mentioned it because of the defensive strengths. People had to come after him right now.
down, first down, second down, pull out all the stops. I think the most indicative part is right here. Lynn Swan gets by the, the linebackers into the secondary. You don't see him very often try to take people on. They're all playing like there's no tomorrow, and there is. They have a first down Pittsburgh on the Cowboy 22. Tie game, 14 all. Franco Harris, they've got him. And there is a great charge by Ed Jones, and Too Tall has been the best of the defensive front four for the Cowboys so far. You get a chance to see one of the reasons that the Dallas Cowboys like to play that flex defense. They get almost a linebacker's read from their big defensive lineman. Watch Too Tall, gets a quick read inside, and he just flies across, gets there as soon as Franco Harris, who said, where in the world did that big guy come from? But the weakness was probed last time, and that is they can't get the pressure on the passer when they're in that flex. Second down, 18. Pittsburgh on the Dallas 30. Down the middle, flag down. Randy Grossman, the intended receiver. A flag was dropped in the secondary. Yes, sir. They know they have their hands full when they start double covering on the outside. Charlie Waters was up there trying to handle Grossman all by himself. I think he held him before the ball was thrown. It looks to me like some sort of defensive interference. That's defensive holding against Dallas. It'll be an automatic first down for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Kurt, we've seen a lot of big games. Have you ever seen the momentum surge back and forth so quickly in a, in a ball game of this importance? You're right, Merlin, and it's, uh, it, it's coming on a motion, and uh, it is coming on hitting out there. I think Bradshaw pretty well summed it up with just just his reaction. You see, Charlie Charlie Waters knows he's got a problem. He's got, he, he ran the out from underneath. It's, he did a little clothes hanging there, John. He just took a hold of that jersey and said, come back here, Randy. I don't, I don't blame him. It's the calls on Henderson now, they said. Well. First, first down, Pittsburgh, Dallas 25. Tie game, 14 all, six minutes to play in the first half. A wild first half. Big rush on him. Shoots it. Dropped by Stallworth. Stallworth couldn't quite hold on to it. Not an easy catch, but it was there to him. Aaron Kyle, graduate of the University of Wyoming, was covering. John, a quick question for you. When you've got three great receivers, doesn't that make all of them better? Well, sometimes there aren't enough balls to go around, Merlin, but this is a play that a guy like Stallworth makes look easy, which is the most difficult catch in football, catching the ball behind you when you're running in a different direction. Bradshaw did throw it about the only place that they, it could be received. They're in a double coverage. Very little room to operate. Randy Hughes, Mike Hedman are in. Dave Stahl's in. This is the prevent defense. Second down, 10. Hughes on the Cowboy 25. Flyer in motion. Draw play. Franco Harris, two yards, and that's all. 23-yard line. Mike Hegman and number 79, Harvey Martin, team up for the tackle. Third down, eight. Pittsburgh on the Dallas 23. You know, these two teams, Pittsburgh led the entire National Football League in allowing the least points, and Dallas has shut out their opponents coming into this game in the last six quarters, and they had led in the fewest yards allowed, and they've both been scored on twice in the first half. So the offenses have gone all out, but I think the point had been made very well by Olsen and Brody. They've been gambling on defense, and they, their gamble sometimes a backfire. Look out. He is snowed under the third sack for Dallas. Two for Pittsburgh. Thomas Henderson in there first. Well, I'm amazed. They just keep coming and coming. But I'll tell you again, if they don't get him down, you see 42, Randy Hughes coming, and that's what you call a jailbreak. Mike Hegman, 58, has a piece of Terry, and he almost got that ball away. They're lucky they got him down. Roy Jarrell has been a very erratic field goal kicker this year. He has kicked three out of 13 from 40 yards out. This is a 51-yard attempt, but he does have the wind at his back. He's hit only 16 out of 32. If Pittsburgh had a weakness, this has been it. The kick is up, up, and it is. It hit the upright. It hit the upright. He just missed. Down on the field is Ed Jones. Ed Jones is injured. Now he's getting up. Kurt, he did what 
good defensive lineman do. He jumped high to try and block that kick. As you watch the emotion of the holder, Colquitt, somebody put their head right into his stomach and I think doubled him over pretty good. First downs in the first half, 10 for Pittsburgh, 4 for Dallas. Dorsett is 42 net yards, the leading ball carrier. Franco Harris has 32 net yards on the ground. The leading receiver, Stallworth, 3 for 115 yards. Super Bowl 10, Lynn Swan set the record. Four catches for 161 yards. Double tight end offense. Tony Hill is out. There's Jackie Smith, one of the tight end. Dorsett, they're trying to get him outside. And he's to the 39. The thing about Tony Dorsett is you stop him, you stop him, you stop him. But one time, bang, he can break it. And he's been close on three or four occasions. He sure has, John. That great outside speed. And I, I don't think I've ever seen a young back use his blocking better. Watch Dorsett. Watch him hang to the outside and set the block right there for number 68, Herb Scott, and then quickly duck underneath it. That's just a great ball carrier who knows how to use his people. Second down, five. There's a man who played for the National Collegiate title, and then his first two years in Pro Bowl is in the Super Bowl. That's not bad. Three years in a row. Second and five. Preston Pearson in the game. He leads the team in receiving, but Newhouse has it. And Newhouse is buried under and swept out of bounds on his 39. And that is Robin Cole, number 56 of New Mexico, who took him out. Number one draft choice two years ago. He was brought down by Robin Cole, but the man who created the angle for him was Donnie Shell. Now, he's got a lot of responsibility. We've seen him in the end zone batting down passes. This time he had to force to the outside. When you're effective running the ball, you put a real burden on those strong safeties. The weak safety's not so much. That's what they've done in this ballgame. The Cowboys alternate their guards, Rafferty and Lawless, the right guard, bringing in play. Landry calls all the plays. Bradshaw calls the plays, the quarterback, the Steelers. Shotgun, four wide receivers on the field now. Going out to Pearson, who made a sensational catch. Preston Pearson, who has a fantastic pair of hands and was released by the Steelers. We'd like to follow Lawless as he gets the signal from Tom Landry and runs out. He's got to deliver the message now to Roger Staubach. Gives it to Staubach there. Staubach now has a chance to collect his thoughts. And Staubach has been probably the best interpreter this game has ever seen. However, on the other side, a different philosophy. Terry Bradshaw has been calling the plays for nine years, and I think the patience of Chuck Knoll has really paid off in the last couple of years. Roger can still dodge. Dorsett and Newhouse are the running back behind him. Pearson in motion. Play action pass. Down the middle, complete. 44-yard line. Catching that ball, Tony Hill. And Mike Wagner, the free safety, hit him. Wagner was second on the Steelers this year in tackles. Play action passing. One of the things that both quarterbacks are trying to take advantage of is the aggressiveness of these defensive teams. Saba gets a little fake to Dorsett. Has time then to get a pass off and has an open zone. Linebackers have been pulled up, John. Okay, Ron Johnson's the only rookie starting for Pittsburgh. Got great people around him. They'd like to get to him. But it's no bargain when you get there because he's held up his end all year long. And they have just given the two-minute warning to us here. Is that a surprise? Only seven passes so far for Roger Staubach, gentlemen. Well, the fact that they have been able to run the ball quite effectively, I think, is the reason for that, Kurt. I think what any way you can make the ball move on the ground, and both teams have done so effectively offensively, that's okay. We have a report that uh, linebacker Mike Hickman has a leg cramp and has been taken off the field. Cowboys first down on the Pittsburgh 44. The last two minutes of the half. They have a blitz on him. He tosses it away. They get it. He goes step. Out of bounds. He's out of bounds on the 32. Starbuck was dead. Dorset is unhappy. They're going at it. What a play Starbuck made. They had the blitz on to get rid of that ball. Okay, the great quarterbacks have the ability to utilize defensive uh, gambles. I think both quarterbacks have done a 
it so well today, this is just an excellent chance to see it. Starbacks getting an eight-man rush. You see Ham coming from one side, Cole coming from another. They just let Cole come. Starback has to get the ball to Dorsett because there's nobody to pick Cole up. He does so with a perfect lob. Ham's a little late getting there just because Starback's ready for what's going on. And again, John, both quarterbacks have been able to beat the blitz, and the biggest plays so far in this game have come against defensive gambles that have backfired. Watch the end of this play. You're going to see some emotion as they just erupted down on the field. Brian Johnson, live it. We have a double penalty, offsetting unsportsmanlike penalty on each team. Unsportsmanlike, Dorsett and Ron Johnson charged with unsportsmanlike conduct. And it's going to be a first down on Starbucks. Amazing ability to unload with a blitz on and get it to penalties. Dorsett. Dead ball foul. First down. Now it's going to be the Cowboys ball on the Steeler 32 with a game tied 14 all and a minute 51 to go in the half. The reason for the dead ball foul call is that the ball goes to where the pass was completed or the, you know, the, the pass was run to the point at the 32. That's the reason he made it a dead ball foul. There's the motion. Bob off, looking, looking. Coming up with it now, Blunt. Blunt brings it back and stops the Dallas drive. Flag is down at the 29. Billy Joe Dupree was the intended receiver. And Mel Blunt, the veteran of nine years, intercepts with a flag down. And Billy Joe Dupree absolutely unloaded on Mel Blunt after he caught the ball. That situation has been turned around in the past. And when, when those defensive backs come up with an interception, they better hang in there. I think there were three of about the hardest hits I've seen all day on this one play. You see Drew Pearson right there, and Mel Blunt just stepped in front of him and took it away. Watch the action here as Blunt goes down. He just gets buried, and they decided that was a little bit too much as they took it into Dupree. Roger took a shot of his own from there. White White. I want to tell you there's some real hitting here. There were bad feelings in Super Bowl X between these two teams, and it has carried, in fact, it has gathered momentum over the last three years. It's a pretty quiet feeling though, Kurt. It's like, make sure you're poised, stay in control of yourself, the situations will come up. I haven't seen a dirty lick passed. I think it's clean, hard hit football. It's just uh, for keeps. It's just highly emotional football, and, and what else should it be? This is a game that has been waited for and prayed for and played for for almost six months. It's no wonder the emotions are running high. Ball first down on their own 44. One minute and 41 seconds left to go in the first half. Game is tied 14 to 14. Now the Steelers want to score before the half. Frank O'Hara gets away from Harvey Martin. Randy White jumps on him. And a flag is down. He slipped away from Harvey Martin, number 79. And then Randy White, who runs a 4 7 40 whose wife said he's just a big, lovable teddy bear. <laughs> well, that's not what the guys on the other side of the line of scrimmage say. It's going to be a holding penalty on the running play as they going to meter out to the penalty against the Pittsburgh Steelers. One of the things that I see on the line of scrimmage, you've got so many big, big play people in this game, so many people that can make the outstanding play against you. And Randy White is certainly one of those because of his great speed, as is Harvey Martin as is uh, to Charles Jones. Let's listen. The illegal use of the hands, offense, number 72. Jerry Mullins, the right guard, was the man that held. The ball is now on the 34-yard line of Pittsburgh. They have a first down and 20. Randy Hughes goes in as a nickel back. They have a minute 33 to play in the half. Bradshaw to Swan. Swan to the 40, he can run it, 45, 50, 45, amazing run by Lynn Swan. He's taken down, finally, Ray Penny through the block, and Randy White chased him down from behind. An amazing run by this great athlete who was a long jump champ from the state of California in high school. You bet he was a great halfback as a, as a high school football player, right out in San Mateo at Sarah High. 
But all of that's for Nell. You can see that smile of his has disappeared. The intention level is as high as I've ever seen it between two football teams. This is a day that neither team would feel very good if they don't get their purpose accomplished. Both teams are playing about as well as they could to do it. Now they're in Miami and they're watching the Steelers threaten here with a minute 13 to go in the half. First down on the 37 of Dallas. Bradshaw. Oh, another. On the Barishnikov of football. He gets off the surface higher than the great Russian ballet dancer. They're going quick, Kurt. Not time, much time to talk about it. Simply Lin Swan has it all. He can jump higher and is more acrobatic than any wide receiver in the game. First down on the Dallas 16. 45 seconds to go. Quick pitch is complete to Frank O'Hara. No, he dropped it. He dropped it as he was cutting away. He had his back to me, and I didn't see the ball pop out. Randy Hughes and Cliff Harris sitting there, and look at Frank as I should have had him. Well, the, the big thing here, now this is the play before it. Lin Swan comes in the middle. He has the, the ability to get to the ball at its oh. highest point. I think better than any offensive receiver I've ever seen. The height factor has nothing to do with it. He gets it at his highest point. Gives Bradshaw a chance to take every opportunity to throw in the middle. Does Terry appreciate that? You Look at that. <laughs> you bet he does. John, I think that uh, Stallworth and Swan made a pact today. They were going to see who was going to do the best job, and right now it's about a toss-up. They what? have both been extraordinary. What a pair they are. Swan has now caught... Uh, Four for 86, Stallworth three for 115. Pretty fair day at the plant. Uh -oh. Safety blitz. Second down 10, Franco Harris to the 10, breaks the tackle, goes down at the seven, and the clock shows 33, and the stop there, the Steelers have rushed in and called timeout. One Steeler timeout left in the half. Aaron Kyle upset Harris, or Harris would have taken it in. And they burned him on the blitz again. Cliffy Harris up right in the line of scrimmage and he tried to guess the count got there a little early gave them a chance to adjust you see him going in 43 they pick him up right there 32 Franco Harris did what he's supposed to do took advantage of the blitz and got himself out of there he's mad that he didn't jump that's that the reason guy. for the reaction he knows there's very few secondary people left when you get by two of them he thought he was going to take it in John Kolb and Sam Davis the left tackle left guard did the blocking John, again, I'm amazed and Kurt, the big plays in this game have come off defensive gambles that have backfired just constantly, and yet both defenses continue to blitz. I think that's a tribute to these two offensive teams. Well, I think primarily the quarterback, because he is the man that has to spot it. A lot has to do with the win you call the snap count. If he sees Harris cheating in there, he gives his guards enough time to spot it so they can pick it up. He's got to keep people off balance. I think they've done it to the secondaries of both clubs. I think they've done it to the defenses of both clubs. I talked to Cliff Harris about the safety blitz. And he said Bradshaw likes to go on that number one count, on the first count. He said, I'm going to jump it. He said, I'm going to be there. And he said, if Bradshaw is going on that first count, I'm going to be on him before he can step back. But as you saw, he got there a little too early and tipped his hand. Here's a setup. It's on the seven-yard line, third down and a yard to go. 33 seconds and a half, and the game is tied 14-0. You saw the uh, visual by our alert NBC crew. Franco Harris now is the leading rusher of all time in Super Bowl game. He had a big one against the Vikings. Third and one. Bradshaw throws. Touchdown. Oh, my Lord. Touchdown. Number 20, Rocky Blyer. Blyer. A very underrated player on the Steelers made an amazing catch there in front of D.D. Lewis. I am not believing, Kurt, the way that Bradshaw not only laid the ball up, but the, but the movement of Blyer to get to the ball. Now, Terry gave him every chance. However, instead of throwing it just all over the ballpark, he just kind of touched the ball out there. I think it's the biggest improvement in his play over the past couple of years. I think Rocky Blair caught it with sheer determination. He's not that good an athlete, but he said, I'm going to get that football. I'm going to score that touchdown. This whole game has been a game of big plays by people who would not be denied. A score with 26 seconds to go in the half. Here's the kick. And the kick is good. And we've got a 35-point first half here. Barry Bradshaw has tossed three touchdown passes. Two to Stallworth. One to Blyer, and the score is Pittsburgh 21 and Dallas 14. Okay, 
You know, you mentioned the Rocky, what Rocky was saying. There's been a lot of people doing a lot of talking. The important thing is he backed it up. He just got it done. Uh, intention isn't, isn't necessarily a verbal discussion. And he beat D.D. Lewis for the ball. D.D. was in excellent position to pick it up. And you can see these guys are hanging in there together. Randy Grossman sees the play all the way. <laughs> Does that tell you something? The Mel Blood interception and the amazing run after catching a short pass by Lynn Swan is what set up this score. A big score maybe for the Steelers to take into the locker room at halftime. Very important to carry that momentum into the locker room if you can. And it, this game has surged back and forth so quickly up and down the field. Just tremendous football. And many people had said this might be the best matchup ever. If the second half is anything like this, it might be one of the best games ever. I think it's already the best Super Bowl ever. Roy Jarella will kick off. Dallas a little down right now, but they bounce back twice. The kick is coming to Larry Brinson. To the 20. 30. And goes down on the 34 with 20 seconds to go in the half. NBC's Olympic Diary Volume 1, The American Way, will take a preview look at America's top Olympic hopefuls and the men and women they'll probably face at the Games of Moscow in 1980. And some real men and women, gentlemen. You know, I, I, look at, I look at gymnastics. I think they've made the biggest gain in America over the past 10 years. Kurt Thomas is really in a world-class uh, gymnast position right now. He's got three or four challengers that are in the same spot. I can hardly wait for the Olympics, but the gymnastics seem to appeal to me most. Gary Bradshaw has already broken the Super Bowl passing record in the first half. Flagger down. Starbuck. Hit from behind. Block stops. 11 seconds to go in the half. Number 68 is the best of the front four, the quickest, Elsie Greenwood, for the Steelers. And let's see what this flag's about. Starbuck. There's a motion penalty occurred against the Cowboys. I think that's the first time L.C. has been on the quarterback all day. Rayfield Wright, uh, who's just accepted his responsibility on the line of scrimmage, has done a good job of keeping L.C. off Staubach during the day. We had an illegal procedure. Five men in the backfield. Dallas declined. Maybe that's why they're playing so good. <laughs> John, a quick question about about the multiple offenses of Dallas. They're certainly confusing to try on defense, but that's one of the problems, isn't it? You sometimes make mistakes yourself when you've got such a complicated system. You do, but at this time, the execution level is exceptionally high. There's uh, Thomas. Second down, 10. They declined the uh, penalty. They hand it off. That's Preston Pearson, and he's dumped. At the 41-yard line with four seconds, three. They're watching the clock. They're going to come off. This, two seconds. Maybe they'll call time. If I know Roger Staubach, he will. Yes, he's called it down there. He wants one more shot. He's, he's thrown some pretty famous passes in his time with a few seconds on the clock. The Hail Mary pass up at uh, Bloomington that beat the Vikings that took him on to Los Angeles to beat... The Rams, I'm sorry to say, you didn't Mr. Olsen, have to remind me of that, Kurt. And then took him into the Super Bowl to lose to Pittsburgh 21-17 with 12 rookies on that team. Quick glance at George Perlis, the defensive coach for the Pittsburgh Steelers, and you can bet he's going to have a bunch of them behind the line of scrimmage and strung out. They don't want to see that ball anywhere near the end zone. There's a man nobody gets next to before the game in the locker room. They say we don't even want to round him. Jack Lambert, he gets so fired up emotionally that everybody stays away from him. Intense. And I'll tell you, when we talk about an emotional leader of a team, he is their emotional leader. They feed off that intensity. They have three backs deep for Pittsburgh. Two seconds to play in the half. The last play of the half. Bob Ock throws it out just off the fingertips of Preston Pearson. That's the end of a sensational first half of Super Bowl 13 here in the Orange Bowl. And the black-shirted Steelers are in the lead, 21 to 14.
Pittsburgh leads 21 14 but look at the statistics if you were to see those numbers and not know the score you would think Dallas would be behind by much more than a touchdown but actually those statistics are a little misleading in that it was two big plays that really got Pittsburgh on the ball there was no sustained drive 42 and 41 yards respectively running the football I think <coughs> indicate the evenness of the game so whoever gets the big plays in this half I think will win the football game. The turnovers three by Pittsburgh and the Cowboys capitalize on two of those for their two touchdowns. Well it's been a game of certainly of turnovers as well as big plays and the first of those turnovers saved what could have been an opportunity for Pittsburgh to get on the board before Dallas had gotten anything up. Terry Bradshaw seems to be in a good mood as he warms up along the sidelines and he isn't showing any signs of uh, any injury and how about Roger Staubach let's take a peek at him I think both of them Dick are just after it they're both alert they're effective Roger's stats don't show it as much as Terry's do however his players have not broken loose for the big game I think you'll see him go some to Billy Joe Dupree which he didn't do much of in the first half I don't think he'll go as much to his wide receivers he really didn't throw the ball that much <clears throat> We're getting ready for the second half, and a man who has seen more of these Super Bowls than anyone in this booth is standing to our right, Kurt Gowdy. Curtis, what are your feelings as we go into the next 30 minutes? My feelings is right there, number 12 in the white, Roger Staubach, is going to be the key in this second half. He was under a big rush, even sometimes in the shotgun. He got the ball away. Another amazing fact has been Tony Dorsett. He had 45 yards rushing in the first period, and that was before the first quarter was over, and wound up with 47 yards for the half. So the Steelers did something to really check him in the second period. There he is, Dorsett. I still feel their best chance is to get the ball to him, running, sweeping, throw the ball to him on screens, or get him out there with flaring and let him go to work one-on-one. -on -one. And this is a magnificent sight at night here in what they call the Magic City where the Orange Bowl is held at NBC carries and the second half now coming up of Super Bowl 13. Dallas will kick with the wind. And the kick is fielded by Larry Anderson on the 15, 25, 30, 35. He has been a outstanding kick returner all year. He's averaged 25 yards on kick returns and now we go to the third quarter you might be interested in individual stats Dorsett's the leading rusher 47 Franco Harris has 40 the rest of them flyer only two yards Newhouse zero Pearson minus 13 first down Pittsburgh on their own 40 Harris knocked down back on his 34-yard line. Bob Bruning shot through that time, the middle linebacker. You see Burdick trying to get him fired up down there. He's saying, hey, let's pin him down right here, force the ball to turn over. First series of the second half, almost very important to establish some kind of momentum. Get the game asserted again, and the Cowboys need to get it going for themselves right now. All right, that same front four, Jones, Cole, White, and Martin. Hickman's all right. He's back in there. Henderson, Rooney, Randy Hughes. Passing down, maybe. Throws it on the run. Over the head of his intended receiver, Rocky Blyer. Hickman was covering number 58. He had a uh, bad leg at the end of the first half, and they took him to the locker room. But evidently, he's all right. Randy White. Excuse me, Kurt. Randy White in there with a vengeance on that play, and uh, Sam Davis had a hold of him from the back side. It looked like he was dragging along bouncing. Terry Bradshaw, quarterback. Blyer and Harris, the running backs. Theo Bell's now in there. Stallworth is out. Swan is the other wide receiver. Grossman, the tight end. Cole, Davis, Webster, Mullen, and Penny are the interior line. Third and 15. And a slot right. Bradshaw on the run, completes the pass. He's completed his own 44 to Theo Bell, who went out, but he's short of the first down. And now Pittsburgh must punt. 
It's the only thing that Theo Bell could do under the conditions. This is Bradshaw running to his right. Normally you find an open space, give your quarterback a chance to get you the ball. He knows the only place that Terry can even get rid of the ball is right in that line of flight. He does, picks up a few yards. They've got a punt. There's a first punt for Pittsburgh. Craig Colquitt's a rookie. Watch him. He only uses two steps. He has not had a kick block. One, two, and it's gone. Against the wind. On the 15, a fair catch call there by Coach Johnson. And the Cowboys will have the ball now. The Cowboy backfield will be Staubach at quarterback. Dorsett, Newhouse, the running back. Stallworth has a bad ankle. They're working on his leg. That's why he was not in there in the first series for the Steelers. Kurt, Kurt I, think, I think what he has is leg cramps. By the way, I saw them rubbing his calves. And if it is, I think he can be back. First down. charge Newhouse hit behind the line of scrimmage white white the right end is in there he's starting the second half number 78 part of the strength of this Pittsburgh defense in the last half of the year came about after they started to alternate white and Banasek at that right end because the two of them in combination have just really been much stronger than they were as one individual playing throughout the half watch it for yourselves white gets tremendous penetration just blows people off the line and grabs it back before he even has a chance. And Newhouse is up the back to put down. Second down, 12. Cowboys from their 13. Roger to throw. Comes back the other way. And the flag is dropped. It was a crossing pattern by Tony Dorsett. The flag went down in the Dallas second. Half. I'll tell you, you know the officials are on their job. Away from the play, Donnie Shell and Billy Joe Dupree were having a go at it, and I think you're going to find Donnie Shell gets a holding call. This will be an automatic first down for the Cowboys. It's going to be interesting to see if these teams are willing to continue with their big play philosophy in the second half. We have number 31 holding defense first down. You're right, John. Donnie Shell, number 31. The torpedo, they call him. 18-yard line of Dallas, first down. Pittsburgh leading 21-14 early in the third quarter. Starbuck. In the eye. They usually run out of this one. There's an emotion. Short man, and that's Newhouse. He's had a minus two-yard total running. That's his best gain of the day, and he's brought down by Jack Ham. Number 58, the outside left linebacker, and Jack Lambert. Mark a respect for a defensive lineman. How many men do you put on him? One on L.C. Greenwood. Watch L.C. fight off the first block. Billy Joe Dupree into the second block. Finally gets a piece of the tackle right there. It's a great defensive line play. They take Newhouse out and put Scott Laidlaw in, his fourth year from Stanford. First time they changed those running backs, the Cowboys. Second down five. That's a, what they call a full eye. Now they put it in motion. Now they're all fouled up. Too much time. You had, a, you had a good look, John, at the, uh, the stand up motion of the line and also the motion out of the backs. Does that tend to confuse, as we said earlier, your own team as, does, as much as it does the defense? I think there the confusion was that Roger did not know when the clock started because uh, very seldom in this game does a man take over 30 seconds to get his play executed. When you know when that clock starts, you're ready to go. He may have had his attention in another area. It crept up on him. He wasn't ready to handle it. I think that's one of the weaknesses of sending the place to the sideline, too. It takes time, John. Second down, 10. 18-yard line of the Cowboys. Drew Pearson in motion. Dabach on the play action. Dropping deep. Nobody open. He takes off. He's at the 20. 25, and he goes down. He's close to a first down on his 28-yard line. And it was Joe Green that brought him down. He can still run his 10th year in the league. And he only does it at the proper time. You know a quarterback at his age, is not he's not running that offense to run the ball from the line of scrimmage. He gets caught, tries to get a first down. He knows where the distance is. He does everything he can to get there. 
he got great help from his backs on those two ends. They looked like they were going to have a shot at him, but they got knocked off their feet. Staubach able to roll out and make the yardage. Talking to Roger, I said, what's your secret of your stardom, your longevity? He works out two hours every day in a gymnasium that he's built in his own garage. And he said, I've never had a serious leg injury. There's Newhouse, who's had a leg injury and had just been taken out. They have a first down for the Cowboys. They're on their own 29. The score, 21-14 Pittsburgh. 11.30 to go in the third period. There are the first downs. This is a strong left formation. Dorsett. Oh, is he cut down? He's hit hard there. Robin Cole, the linebacker, and Steve Furness helped in number 64. Robin Cole to the outside on that one, Kurt. It looked like Dorsett was going to have a chance to break it up. Cole boxed him a little bit, made him cut back inside, and then just put a tremendous hit on him. Watch right here. Cole from the outside. He just buries Dorsett. That's a big defensive play, and that'll discourage you back from running up in there. And it's amazing how the Steelers have stopped Dorsett since the first period. We said you could stop him a lot, and then suddenly he can break one. Second down nine. Makes a gain out of what looked like a broken play with nobody open, and it's Furness who hauled him down from behind again. Okay, that's a double screen pass. Both of his screen screen men were covered by linebackers. What does it do? It leaves the middle open if he can get underneath the pass rush. He was able to do it. That was the only option he had left. Came close to picking up a first down. Looks like it's about the third one. The flag disregarded. The flag accidentally thrown. Take a look. Here he goes. Little fake to the right or to the left. Comes back to the right, and his screen is covered by Greenwood, who makes a fine play on that. Now Roger has to go up underneath. Well pursued by the linebackers and the defensive linemen, but close to a first down. Sometimes that happens for you. You anticipate it. You feel it. There's 58 Lambert working on Dupree, and he's got him held off pretty well. Lambert's the guy that's going to come back in and, and make a piece of that tackle. Back to the live action, Kurt. Right. They have two tight ends. Short yardage, third and a yard. Laidlaw, and they stop him. Cole! Laidlaw, hit by Robin Cole. Jack Lambert. Cole is fired up here in the opening of the third quarter. Steve Furness had limped off the field. They sent in a replacement for him. 67, Gary Dunn. And the Cowboys went directly at Dunn. 35, cuts it inside. But there's Lambert, there's Dwight White, there's Gary Dunn. There's Robin Cole, all the black shirts. And I think what really is indicated here is the fact that they have taken the ball to Robin Cole. In doing so, he's been up to the task. Where do you go from there? All right, punting for his fourth time now, Danny White. He averaged 35 yards a kick in the first half. Plenty of time. A nice kick, Theo Bell back, 20-yard line. They'll wallop him down on his 24. And that's Benny Barnes, number 31 went down to cover. The punt was good for 43 yards. You have to have big plays in your special teams. Watch Benny Barnes as he comes down, eludes the first man, eludes Smith. Now watch the hit on T-Bell right here. Benny Barnes puts a great shot on him. Two men in on that tackle. The other one, 56. Hollywood Henderson. And they put T-Bell right in the air. And they are the two wide men on punts. Stallworth is back in the game for the Steelers. Good news for Steelers fans. He's had a big First half, first down, Pittsburgh on their own 24. Franco Harris hit both running games being stalled. Harris knocked down behind the line of swimming by Ed Jones, who's been penetrating that Pittsburgh backfield. Franco tried to put a couple of moves on him. Too tall wouldn't bite. <laughs> and he said, hey, you ain't going nowhere this time. On the 21 of Pittsburgh, it is second down, 13. We've had several cases of leg cramps, Kurt, and I think that's an indication of emotion a lot of times. I think you, you burn off so much energy that the muscles begin to knot up, and I think we've seen it on both sides of the line. Bradshaw lets them over. 
They have Hickman in there, Randy Hughes, Dave Stalls. This is their passing defense. So they run the ball. Rocky Blyer. He hasn't had it much today, and he's stopped by Thomas Anderson. That's the second carry in the game for Rocky Blyer. Isn't it awfully dangerous if you come out with a lead in the second half and kind of pull your wings in? Looks like uh, Pittsburgh pulled back a little bit. I'm not necessarily uh, sure that that's what's happening. They're trying to get the ball moving on the ground. They feel they can. Pittsburgh has been out of the flex, which allows them to do a little more trapping, exploit things they haven't been able to. However, Dallas has stuffed them on the ground. Now we have a third down and 11. Pittsburgh on their 23. Fire motion. Flag is down. Flag is down. This may be an illegal procedure. They blew it dead before the ball was snapped. That's it. Illegal procedure against Pittsburgh. Chuck Knoll. It's amazing how both these clubs have operated. Pittsburgh came behind the Cowboys and have operated their organization the same as Dallas. By draft choices, no trades, rearing them right on your own farm and bringing them up. You know, I think, too, the, the similarities between both Tom Landry and Chuck Noll is consistency. They let everybody know where they're standing. They're the same every day, and I think it has a lot to do with their success. They have a third down and 16. He shoots it out. Oh, a dangerous pass out there. Incomplete. Kenny Barnes was covering Lynn Swan. Charlie Waters nearly got in there and intercepted him. And the Cowboys have held. And now Pittsburgh must run against the wind. Not an optimum situation throwing the ball on, on your own 20 yard line. Bradshaw has so much confidence between he and Swan that he's going to take the chances that a lot of quarterbacks wouldn't take. Linebacker made a perfect drop, made, the, made Benny Barnes' job easier. Swan almost came up with it anyway. Dallas should get good field position. He's punting against the wind. He gets it away, end over end. Johnson on his 46 50, 45, and down to the Pittsburgh 42 yard line. And the Cowboys have the ball. Dangerous punt. Low, no hang time. They're lucky Butch didn't get that further back into their territory. They turned the ball over because this play was not complete. However, look at the dependability of Swan coming out of his cut. Bradshaw knows where he's going to be, gives him every chance. This ball did actually short hop just before Swan got it. But when you can catch him on a short hop, on a high fly, anywhere they throw him, you're going to get a few good calls. This is just an alert call by the official. Drew Pearson, by the way, has not had a reception in this game. First down, Dallas. They're on the Pittsburgh, 42, out of the eye. Dorsett back to Starbuck. Deep, it goes to Hill. No good. Hill was covered all the way. Starbuck knocked down. Dorsett back to Starbuck. They pulled that one against New England, and it worked to Tony Hill in the regular season. Ron Johnson covered the play all the way on Tony Hill. But take a look. It sets up for Strawback to throw a little flea flicker, as they call it. You hand the ball off. That's the key to get after the ball carrier. But boy, Roger takes his lumps on this baby. How long can you take that until it starts to pay a price on you? Well, he's taken it for a number of years, and uh, he gets up after each one. He's got hands like a defensive tackle. I looked at him the other day. He's got <laughs> fingers pointing every direction. Oh, like an old catcher. Yeah, an old baseball go. catcher. Five out of 11 for Roger. Second like down 10 for the Cowboys. Pearson in motion. There's the toss. They're set cutting back and is jammed at the 38 yard line of the Steelers. And there to meet him was L.C. Greenwood, number 68. Arkansas AMN. Nine sacks this year he led the Steelers in getting to the quarterback. Third down, six. Tony Hill, second year out of Stanford, already in the Pro Bowl. Now, you know that Drew Pearson had a lot to do with getting him in there because wide receivers work in tandem. However, this time he got his lunch eaten. He got stuffed. All right. They have a rookie wide receiver, Robert Steele, in there. Shotgun spread. Dombach looks him over, fires, completes it to the 29 of Pittsburgh for a first down 
And that was quite a catch there by Preston Pearson. Tell me that Roger Stolfak can't still fire that ball when he has to. Two linebackers standing on either side of the receiver. He's back there, finds a little hole, and really fires the ball. Preston Pearson is in there because he finds the holes between linebackers. Preston Pearson, a great basketball player. They call him blood, muscle, and bones. He does not have one ounce of fat on him. And here's uh, Septian trying to warm up his leg. Hope he doesn't miss that net. <laughs> First down. Cowboys in the Pittsburgh 29. The cutback goes set. He's trying to cut back for daylight. Hit by Jack Lambert. Number 58, who is waiting for him in the middle. L.C. Greenwood cut underneath the tackle, Rayfield right, and he put a shot on Roger just as Roger handed that one off. Roger said, hey, I have got the ball. You go after Tony. Second down, nine. Only three members of this Cowboy 45-man squad have ever played for another coach than Tom Landy. They were Pearson, Jackie Smith, and Septian. Lambert getting a shot right on the inside, able to slip back out and get a piece of that tackle. Second down, nine. Right now, two, over the 25, and a quick opener to the 22. Jack Ham, Jack Lambert teamed up the gathering men. Laidlaw seems to find the hole since they've inserted him in place of Bob Newhouse when he got injured. Laidlaw has had several outstanding games, been a very integral part of the whole Pittsburgh, uh, Dallas offense. Here you see he finds holes where they don't seem to be. Doesn't hurt to be in the backfield with uh, number 33, Tony Dorsett. And also, the guy hit on that tackle again, we might add, Jack Camp, a saving tackle. They have a double tight end offense, third down and three. They're on the Pittsburgh 22. Ripping Dorsett, he cuts. And he storms forward and gets the first down. Dorsett dived and wriggled and got there. Ron Johnson, the rookie cornerback, running down. Watch the battle going on inside as they're driving hand to the outside. Picks up again on the second block. That's Rafferty getting a piece of it. Dorsett does a lot of that on his own. Just cuts inside and literally crawled for the last four or five yards. But they cut down the inside pursuit. They got Lambert. They got the inside lineman. Dorsett got a chance to do his thing. And Laidlaw was the guy that got Lambert. Yes, he did. Dorsett, the leading ball carrier in the game. Both teams play much more conservatively this quarter than they did in the first half. 21 to 14, Pittsburgh in the lead. Three and a half to play in the third quarter. He'll pass on first down. He shoots it out, and it's incomplete. Meant for Billy Joe Dupree, the tight end. They haven't gone to him much today. They have tried to go to him. Donnie Shell has played him like a shadow all day long. They put a big burden on Donnie Shell because Dupree is an outstanding tight end. He's playing a bump and run position. That's really tough now because once he gets down the field, you have to keep your hands off him. He's shadowing him, and he's really responsible for the play. Well, it has to be aggravating for him. Staubach under quite a bit of pressure from Joe Green, who came around on a stunt. But you see how close Donnie Shell is to Dupree, and I think that really is bothering him, Don. You put your finger right on it. Second down, 10. Dallas on the Pittsburgh, 17. Dungey's in there. Dorsett, they had a blitz on. Dorsett goes to the 10. They had a blitz, a, a safety blitz. All right, how many times? We've seen it twice in this ball game. Franco Harris broke early in the, or in the second quarter, almost scored. Stallback just staggers the count a little bit, allows his offensive lineman to get it, get it straight, get their assignments under order. As they do so, Dorsett almost takes that one in. Well, he sure did. He broke it out clean. Very, very dangerous. Watch Donnie Shell, number 31. He's got to come up and try and save this on Dorsett. If he doesn't make the tackle, it's six points. It is third and three, and they're getting some power in there now. Andy Frederick, Billy Joe Dupree, and Jackie Smith. Look at that. Hope That's stick a receiver. Thomas Henderson. I wonder if he can hang on to anyone with that. I don't know. Sticky kid stuff. We would uh, like to let our viewers know there's a great new show coming up on NBC. Preview of Brothers and Sisters. It will be seen in its entirety over most of these stations at the conclusion of our Super Bowl coverage. And I know you're going to like it. All about life and a fraternity and a sorority. 
I was in one of those. Uh, hell, I was in one. Eternity. <laughs> <laughs> it's on the 10-yard line right now. As we look down over the Orange Bowl, the Cowboys are grinding it out with a conservative attack. They have two tight ends, a second-string tackle holding the Frederick in there, and they have a third down and two, and they're on the Pittsburgh 10. And they're behind. And they're going to throw. Oh, he's got it. Wow. Wide open. Yeah. Yeah. Drop. Drop. Veteran Jackie Smith. He's a great human interest story. 15 years with the Cardinals. First time he ever got a chance to go to the Super Bowl, signed by the Cowboys, and he let a sure touchdown pass get away. He has helped them all year. I can remember playing a Pro Bowl in 1965 with Jackie Smith. Not many players play that long at that position. But what happens here? Roger Staubach's got all the time in the world. Jackie Smith is wide, wide open. Nobody within 10 yards of him and almost too far open. Too much time to think. Staubach pulled the plug a little bit. Now we're going for a 27-yard field goal. Something else happened on that play that might have a real bearing on the game, too. It looked like Lambert may have been injured on the play. He's left the field. We'll try and get a report on it. But this becomes a big play with 2.39 left. The Cowboys need to get some points right here. Now there wasn't a man within 10 yards of it. Waters will hold for Septian. 27-yard attempt. And the kick is good. The Cowboys got only three out of the drive. And they missed what would probably been a sure seven. Well, I'm sure that no one on the field knows that more than Jackie Smith, a great veteran. I'll tell you the thing that's amazing to him or about him is that they timed him early in the year. This is his seventh year, 17th year of professional football. They timed him at 4-6-5 and 4-6-7 as we're watching the inside. I think what you're going to see Ooh. and why a good reason why he was so open. Lambert gets hurt a little bit here. I think he's picked up by Laidlaw again, and there is no one in the middle. It's like... I, I, it might have been a blown assignment. You very seldom leave anybody that unguarded. However, those are the kind of opportunities that occasionally come. When they do, you must take advantage of them. We've had a lot of cracked and broken ribs during the year, and you see a helmet right to the ribs of Lambert. I wouldn't be surprised if that's not what they're working on on the sideline over there. This is the score, the way the Super Bowl X ended, 21-17 Pittsburgh. We're still in the third quarter here with 2.36 to play. Tepion kicking off. Anderson's deep. They're trying to kick it away from him. It is going out of bounds. And Dallas will come back and re-kick from their own 30. You got Ted Peterson down there having some fisticuffs with someone. Hollywood Henderson? No. That's Guy Brown, 59. There's a lot of emotion on that field. They're cooking down there. Starbuck. Talking to Jim Myers, the assistant coach. Assistant head coach, they call him. You see Jackie Smith, and sometimes, you know, you don't, when you're not in there on a regular basis, you, you're just doing everything you can to help at any given time. He couldn't have run a better pattern. He couldn't have fooled the defense any more than he did, and I think his reaction after he didn't catch it tells it all. He's a master at those sneak patterns, too. He's, he knows he's, how to hide, doesn't he? He's as good as there is, and it's pretty hard to hide at 230 and six foot four. He retired 13 months ago. Bud Wilkinson and the Cardinals tried to talk him coming back to St. Louis. He said no, and then he finally went with the Cowboys and made the Super Bowl. And unfortunately, it just dropped the pass wide open in the end zone. The kick again by Stephon. Larry Anderson waits for it on the nine. He's up to the 15, 20. 25, ooh, he hit, and down he goes on the 28-yard line. And he's hit there by Robert Steele, the rookie wide receiver, and also Thurman, number 32. The United States Olympic Committee will receive the net proceeds from an initial commercial scheduled in this program under an agreement made with NBC for the broadcast of the United States Olympic trial. NBC acknowledges the cooperation of the NFL in helping to broadcast that commercial announcement. There's Lambert. They've been working on him. Theo Bell's in and Stallworth's out, so Stallworth must be injured again. Pittsburgh from their 28. They're leading by four. Bradshaw. Off they go to Franco Harris, and he's hit by Randy White, number 54. 
and the Steelers have gone conservative here in the third quarter. We talked about the fact that they, if they, if they do that, they stand a chance of getting in real trouble against these Cowboys. All right, we've discussed that, and sometimes when you're not executing well, it looks like you're becoming conservative. In the last drive, he threw two balls. They were incomplete. It's the execution of Dallas's defense which is making them look conservative. You still have to be aggressive no matter what play you call. Bradshaw's 12 out of 21 in the game. Second down, six. Jones is after him. Nearly intercepted, not quite. Pass intended for Theo Bell, and Aaron Kyle was trying to flash in front of him. Third and six, and Dallas is now stopping the Pittsburgh passing game. Well, and Terry Bradshaw, here again, was trying to make a good play out of a bad situation. The pass rush forced Theo Bell out of his original pattern. Aaron Kyle played excellent defense. And we see too tall limping off the field. That can't be a good sign for Dallas. And he has been a terror today in that Pittsburgh backfield. Well, he's doing a great job of holding Ed White. What a frustrating day for him. That's Cove, number 55, working on him, giving him everything but, but his lunch to carry back the line of scrimmage. Third down. Eight. Bradshaw. Trying to get out of the pocket. Throws on the run. And a skidding grab. It's complete. At the 44, Theo Bell made the grab, and it'll be a Pittsburgh first down. They must have a receiver factory back in Pittsburgh. We know about Stallworth and Swan. Theo Bell looks like a carbon copy. I can remember Frank Lewis a couple years back, Ronnie Shanklin. They all look like the same type of receiver. You're still looking for their weakness after they've beaten you. Now watch Bradshaw. He is going to take a lick. Once you throw that ball on the run, you're pretty much fair game, and he gets his shot. Paying the price back there. Somebody else paid the price. 72 Mullins is on the ground, and Steve Corson has come in. The hitting on the field has continued at a rapid pace. Has left a lot of people laying on the ground. You wonder if those are cheap shots. No, they're not. Uh, the straight shot from Laidlaw to, to Lambert. And I don't see this one take place, but the, the hitting down on the field is just a crescendo of noise up here. You know, Terry's been around the NFL nine years. He's never passed for 300 yards, and here in the Super Bowl today, he has 275 yards in passing completion. Ooh, boy, that hurts just to see Bradshaw roll on the ground that way, doesn't yeah. it? The one good thing is all those replays only got him one lick. Uh, <laughs> he only had to do it for from, real one time. We huh? saw him from several different <laughs> angles. It's a good thing he doesn't have to take that abuse more than, more than once. Gary Mullins is leaving the field. And Steve Corson. Number 77 will replace him at right guard. Apparently someone stepped on too tall Jones's ankle. We've got a lot of replacements in the game right now. Larry Bethay has gone in for too tall, and Steve Corson, of course, playing guard. In there. And the level of play hasn't dipped. May, may indicate something too about the level back of play in there. both clubs. Ed Jones is back in, 72. First down, Pittsburgh on their 44, and they're ahead, 21-17. The last minute of the third quarter. Quick hitch pass, struck the ground in front of Lynn Swan. He knew it, he just knelt there. He didn't want to get up and have somebody hit him. Second down, 10 on the Pittsburgh 44. You mentioned earlier, Kurt, that uh, Stallworth may have been injured. It was the same injury. He still has those leg cramps. And uh, even though they can go away sporadically, it's hard to get rid of them for the whole, for the whole game. Look, look who's there. Danny White. He had an excellent second half against Atlanta. Big game against the New York Jets. Last regular game of the season. Second down, 10. Drop. No good. No good. Lynn Swan on it right there with him. Is Cliff Harris, one of the hardest hitters in football. He doesn't even want him to touch any part of it, whether it, whether it counts or not. Bum Phillips made a quote about Lynn Swan. He, there, it's impossible for him to drop one. They didn't hold on to this one. He didn't drop it either. He got he got a lot of help from behind. That's just good coverage by Barnes. He's played a very good game defensively. Lynn Swan has has been uh, really pressed to make the big plays in order to get any yardage on his own. Nobody's given him much all day long. You see Charlie Waters concerned about the deep pass, allowing Benny Barnes to come up and force quickly. 44 seconds remain in the third quarter. 
They're down on 10. Let's go. Blitz. Look at the rush on. And Randy White. Hop right on him. Randy White gets him. They call world. him the Manster. Part man, part monster. He'd been contained early in the game, but Randy White said, hey, my turn, guys. He blows to the outside. You see Davis trying to keep him out there, but really just keeps penetrating until he finally gets a shot as Bradshaw tries to come up through the middle. He had a blitz from Randy Hughes there. Now, Colquitt doesn't want to punt. He'd rather they change goal, but he has to kick against the wind with 29 seconds to go in the third period. Pittsburgh will have the wind at their backs in the fourth quarter. And the kicks away. It is a good one. Rick Johnson to the six. 10, 15, 20. And plows his way back. An excellent return by Brooke Johnson. Boy, that was just sheer guts the way he came he at. Big plays and big games, line. NBC Sports World. World Pro Skiing Championship from Aspen. They're going to have some of the top people in the world there. The top downhill veteran, Walter Tresch. And one of the uh, best for America, David Courier. Jungle Jim Hunter from Canada, defending downhill champ. There's four to six Eastern time. Sunday, January 28th on Sports World. The downhillers coming down buttermilk out of Aspen. That's going to be pretty exciting. Dallas on their 28th first down. Nine seconds to go in the third period. Dorsett getting away twice, three times. He stopped at the 30-yard line by Donnie Shell. Almost like a, some kind of electrotherapy being given. It's a given muscle that stimulator that they've got on Betty Barnes' leg there. 35 points in the first half, three points in the third quarter as the defense has stiffened up or... Did both of them go too conservative? What do you think? I don't buy that conservative part. I don't think they executed as well offensively as they had in the first half. That, those defenses are going to be a big part of that step. I think there's a lot of action left, though. All right, let's take a look. Here we go. The fourth period of Super Bowl 13. Dallas, second down, eight. Roger Staubach, way over the head of his receiver, Drew Pearson. And they have worked hard on Drew Pearson today. Ron Johnson, a rookie, the only rookie starter on either offense or defensive unit of both teams. Pearson has not caught a ball today. He's really earned his keep, hasn't he? He's right there on top of Pearson, jams him legally in the first zone, and then out of there ahead of him. Roger did what he could, but uh, I'll tell you, Johnson has really earned his keep today. We mentioned earlier that it's hard to get a single coverage. Mike Wagner was right over there to help. Put Johnson in, Preston Pearson, passing men, third and eight for the Cowboys. Off the shotgun, little flare, oh, a remarkable catch there by Dorsett. What an athlete to catch that ball on the flare, and he picks up the first down, a big third down play for the Cowboys. One of the things that the great back, the great player will do for you, he'll make a couple of plays in the game that maybe no one else could make. This is that kind of play. The ball is not thrown very well. Way ahead of him. Watch him as he gets it. Now, the, the easy thing would have been to fall down. Did not fall down, made another 12 yards. Well, we talk about the fact it wasn't perfectly thrown, but he had taken so much off it, it gave a guy like Dorsett with the great speed and opportunity to get his hands on it. It was a simple little five-back defense. The linebackers were not in pursuit of the play, and Stallback took advantage of it. Look at that. The, uh, the stats way in favor of Pittsburgh, yet it's a tight game, a four-point difference. Dorsett again. Dorsett goes down on his 44-yard line, hit there by Jack Lambert, number 58. We pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. Chuck Knoll, his 10th season. Great record in postseason uh, play. 10 wins, 4 losses. Kurt Gowdy here with John Brody, Merlin Olson, our host Dick Enberg. Early in the fourth period, it's 21-17 in favor of Pittsburgh. Light rain this morning. No rain now. The field is fast. Cool. That is almost perfect for football. Dabot on the draw to Laidlaw. 
Laidlaw plows his way to his 48-yard line, and he's brought down by Jack Ham, the left linebacker, and also aided by Jack Lambert. Now, here's another third big down play coming up for the Cowboys. And we talk about how much Jack Ham is in on the play. This time, it looked like the offense may have gotten a little bit the best of him. He didn't force quick enough. When you're making the tackle six yards down the field, Merlin, you know that's not good defensively. It looked like he was out there responsible for the outside. I think they're using Dorsett as a decoy and opening up some room for Laidlaw inside. Third down, five. Cowboys, 48. They're trailing by four. Off the shotgun. Dabak flip is reflected at the line of scrimmage. I believe it was Greenwood. I don't know. He's six feet, six and a half. He, and he had those arms up there. That's what a defensive line was supposed to do, isn't it, Merlin? Well, they call that highballing him. And certainly you got that size and you got those long arms. That's the way it's supposed to work. They're not getting great pressure. They got the four guys coming. It's uh, it's Joe Green, it's actually, Green. 75. And they were playing game. They yes. Crisscross. That's a beautiful little stunt. And if you want to throw it across the middle, it does take your lanes away to throw. Especially when they're all that big. That's right. <laughs> Danny White kicking against about a 10-mile-an-hour wind. Theo Bell is the safety man. Kick it away. And it is a good one. It's touched on the 8-yard line by Benny Byrne. We got a penalty on the field, Kurt. Danny White hesitated on that play, and he let a few of his linemen get out ahead of him. They're going to be called for an illegal man downfield. The two wide men can leave at the snap of the ball. The rest have to hold until the ball is kicked. Now watch this. He hesitates. Give him time to get down there. And he destroyed the timing of somebody on the interior line. They cannot leave till it's kicked. They have to anticipate when he kicks it, Kurt. And it really changed a big play. Now, Danny White has made so many big plays on his own from punt formation, both throwing the ball and running the ball, that you better have somebody keeping guard of the palace or he's going to run it down your throat. That time, it was... A bad deal for D. The eligible man, downfield, number 32, offense. Yep, that was sir. a member of the uh, punting team, Dennis Thurman, the cornerback. There he is. Oh, the Cowboys have had two bad breaks here. They've dropped a touchdown pass, Jackie Smith, in the end zone. And that time they would have had uh, Pittsburgh pinned on their own eight-yard line. But let's see what they do here. This kicks away a low spiral. Bell on the six to the ten. And he's nailed immediately on the 14. So they gained six yards after the penalty. And it was Thomas Henderson down to make the tackle. He can really run, Thomas Henderson. I think that's one of the finest open field tackles of the day. Watch Tom Henderson. He's on the outside. He's doing what you normally send a receiver down to do. Gets off the block right there. That's Jack Delaplane trying to knock him down. Now watch this one-on-one. -on -one. Look at him break down. Great position. T-Bell didn't have a chance. What a play. Here's a very interesting statistics on first downs. Pittsburgh has averaged six and a half yards. Dallas, 1.8 yards. So what uh, Pittsburgh's been having is second and three and second and four in the game. Right now they have a first down from a 14-yard line. Franco Harris, a couple of yards out to his 16. Hammered down by Larry Cole, the left tackle, the 11-year veteran from the University of Hawaii. Coach, you know, when we talk about statistics, I think this is the indication of the way the second half is going. 6.7 includes two first down long gainers by Pittsburgh. That's why some, sometimes when we get involved with stats, even though they're as impressive as they are, they're not a true indicator of the flow of the game. Right now, both defensive lines are running the ball. Uh, Dorsett, 69 yards. I want to talk about that in a minute. Second down eight for the Steelers. That pass is just tossed away. It was intended for Theo Bell. Bradshaw was being chased by Bob Brunig, and he knew he was in real trouble. He said, hey, get rid of that ball and let me loose. Blitz is coming. Bradshaw does not have time. Had he had a little time, he might have been able to get Swan. It was one-on-one -on -one over there on the corner, but he does a smart thing, something you used to do very well, John. He unloads the football. <laughs> he knows the worst he's going to have now is a chance at third and eight. It's also one-on-one, -on -one, Brunig and Bradshaw. That, <laughs> yes, that, that precludes any other one-on-one -on -one situation. Third down eight. Steelers on their 16. They're ahead, 21-17. Andy Hughes, Mike Hickman in the secondary. That pass is complete. 
That's Randy Grossman. Randy Grossman hit by Harris, and it looks like a first down. That's knowing where your first down marker is. He caught the ball, and as he as he caught it, Harris knew where the first down marker was, too. It's just a flash. Can I keep him on the other side of the line? He got just far enough, gave himself a little leeway. <laughs> Cliff Harris gave him the right knee. He did everything he could to take it loose. That's right. It's like trying to handle a, a spear. First down, Steelers. On. Let's put it on their 26. They're ahead. 21-17. They're going to throw again. And it is complete. It is 89. They hit Lynn Swan there. Right on top of him is Benny Barnes. Here's a club deep in their own territory. Four points ahead. And bang, bang, they come out throwing. Let me ask you a question. Does that look conservative to you? He's come out of his own hole. And, and now they're executing. That's what I'm talking about. And that is execution on Lynn Swan's part. Goes up in the air, down in the ground. I don't know how you ever get the ball by Beautifully done. And the other thing it is, it's throwing to the place where it can't be intercepted. Look how it goes to the ground here. No way to intercept that pass. 102 yards for Swan. Stallworth had 115 yards. Two wide receivers for over 100 yards. First down. The pitch is to Franco Harris. He's at the 40. And he has his legs cut out from under him at the 44 by Aaron Kyle, the right cornerback. Kyle's a hitter for 185 pounders. Second down, six. We we're talking about Terry Bradshaw. Never has thrown for 300 yards in his career in the NFL. And today he has 296. He's four yards short. Very seldom has he ever had to, pal. Today is one of those times. And he's doing it in the Super Bowl. He'll throw again. A blitz is on. A high lob. Look out. Swan there. Flags are down. Benny Barnes. This could be interference. Benny Barnes, it's a close play, a trip. Lynn Swan and Benny Barnes, who's it on? Well, Benny Barnes was in a position where he did not have his eye on the ball. He actually slipped trying to make a move back around toward it. And as Lynn Swan, with a perfect angle to the ball, went to move, they got tangled up. You see Cliff Harris is on a safety blitz. He's well picked up in the center by Rocky, Rocky Blyer. It's a 28-yard penalty, and it really puts Pitt, Pittsburgh in excellent position. That's an awfully tough call for an official, and they did a good job of covering it. But again, what great coverage from our camera crews, our technicians here. John, I, I know that you and Kurt would agree. It's just been a thrill to be able to look down here on our monitors and see this great coverage of this game. Well, that is a difficult call. Who trip boom? Or whom trip boom? <laughs> All right, first down. Steelers on the Dallas 23. Cowboys have had three bad breaks in this half. Swan, Swan, still going. Oh, 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 how he is hit by Harvey Martin. But well, what amazing running ability he has for a wide receiver. You look at the suppleness of the man. When a guy hits you and one man down, downstairs already got a hole and you're still able to get out of there with your bones intact, you have, you have some ability to handle a situation. You look like a rubber man down there. They're just stretching him about six directions. It is second down, seven coming. Watch the play. You get a chance right there to watch D.D. Lewis get a piece of him. Watch Swan now. Watch the way he bends. Gets a shot right there. Twisted over. Hit again. Twisted again. And got up off the ground. Second down, seven. 20-yard line of Dallas. Pittsburgh ahead, 21-17. A little over eight minutes to play. Franco Harris. They got him hemmed in. And they stop him. That's Aaron Kyle coming up to hit him again. The play was turned in, though, by Larry Cole and D.D. Lewis. They shred the blockers and allowed Kyle to come up and make the hit. Amazing that Dallas has controlled Harris so well during the day. Get a good look at it at ground level. Harris trying to get to the outside. He's got Mullen, 72, in front of him. But the pursuit is so good and so quick. You see Lewis out there. You see about four or five other Cowboys. White out there, just unable to get any kind of yardage at all. Larry Bethay replacing Harvey Martin at right end. Randy Hughes is in. Third down, five. Pittsburgh on a Dallas 18. Pittsburgh leading by four. 
Here they come. Blitz. They got him. Okay. 56, Thomas Henderson. You know what? It looks like there's a, a flag thrown on the play, Kurt, but what Henderson did so well is he kind of lulled people to sleep. You can see Harris is a little hot at the situation. That's the way it goes. And here's a penalty. Let's listen. Delay of game. Offense. Delay of game against the Steelers. They mark it off. 7-17 to play. It is now on the 23, a 22 yard line of Dallas. It'll be third down and nine. Bradshaw, great day for him. Third and nine. Franco Harris puts it through. Harris scores! Franco Harris! Joe Green, Franco Harris, teammates on great ball club. All right, you said earlier, Merlin, that if, if Pittsburgh's offensive linemen can get Pitt, uh, Dallas out of the flex defense, they can start trapping people. All they need to do is give Franco one hole. They gave it to him there. Webster, Mullins, and Penny did it. And it's a trap. You see it right there. That's number 74 coming up to the inside. He threw the most critical block, but Franco just blew up in there. Ray Penny, of course, done a great job for them during the year playing guard and tackle. Guerrero's kick is up. Flag is down. Flag down. There's Franco Harris. Money, money player in the big game. Offside. Dallas. Kick is good. So it is now 28-17. One of the reasons that there was room back there for Franco is that Waters got tangled up with the official right there. And that was Penny who came in and just picked him off the back of the official and knocked him down, giving Franco room. And when he gets his momentum up, I don't want to tackle him. You saw some words between Thomas Henderson and Franco Harris. And then Harris popped in that huddle. I wonder if he said, get me a hole, boys. There, I want them. Well, I tell you, Kurt, there are some dogs you just want to let lie. And I would say Franco Harris is one of them. Sometimes you walk in a huddle, he doesn't have to say anything. His, his calves are pulsating, and, and the linemen know, let's get him something going. What? There's a fumble. Pittsburgh has it, I think. Pittsburgh has the ball. Randy White fumbled it. Randy White picked up the squib kick, fumbled it, and now the pilot. And you've got to wonder if that cast on the left hand of Randy White made it impossible for him to grasp that football properly. Look at Landry. Very seldom shows emotion, and there is emotion. What more can happen to me in the second half? We've dropped a touchdown pass. We've committed a uh, pass interference play. We've let the man run open for a touchdown. And now, here's the pilot. It still has not been determined. They're still fighting for it down there, probably. They need a crossbar to get this one. Even the officials are pushing Yeah, the officials around. are getting a little testy, huh? too. Yes. Pittsburgh ball. Pittsburgh ball. That's what we thought. Randy White, a defensive tackle, picked up the squib kick and fumbled it. They still won't untangle down there. A chance for you to see it right there. Randy White just couldn't get it closed into his hands. I don't think he could get his hands closed on I it. agree with you, Merlin. Tony John Dungy forced the play, however, when it starts falling around on the ground, even though the officials have ruled Dirt Winston, Dirt Winston, Winston has it. It. it took him five minutes to get up. They <laughs> call him Dirt, and he was always in the dirt in college, hitting somebody, and he's got that Super Bowl ball for a souvenir. It's first down Pittsburgh on the Dallas 19, and the Steelers are ahead 28-17. And the pressure is squarely on the shoulders of the Dallas defense. They can't afford to give up any more points. What they need right here is a turnover, a big play from the defense, get them headed back down the other way. Bradshaw has his club set. Blyer and Harris behind him. He's going to throw. He's a swan touchdown. 
Lynn Swan, touchdown. Man, I what an acrobat. It looked like one of the great catches of all time. Give Bradshaw credit, however. It was an in and out double team. He had to throw over the top of the inside of the double coverage. Swan made a beautiful leaping grab. Give How's him a turnover, they turn it into points. Hey, ex quarterback, how's that for a call? Oh, I like the execution. Anybody can call that play. There's only a few guys that can get it done. Now, as he goes back, he takes a little steam off the ball, throws it over the top of uh, Cliff Harris. Harris has no play, and Swan makes a great one. But I tell you, it takes a lot of guts to make the call because the conservative thing, the easy thing, is to stay on the ground, not to make a mistake. Bradshaw would have none of that. I think he's really grown up as a signal caller and a quarterback. The flag is down again on the extra point. Pittsburgh has scored two touchdowns in 11 seconds. Two touchdowns in 11 seconds, the Steelers. How many times do they do that, Kurt? They play Houston in the second half. They almost did the same thing. Dallas offside. The kick is good as they refused the penalty. Houston gave up 17 offside. points to Pittsburgh. Defense enforced in the penalty on seconds. the kickoff. In the championship game. Let's go down and take another look at that, courtesy of our producer, George Frankel, and Teddy Nathanson, our director, who's done a super job, as we said earlier, bringing you the action. There it is right there. Cliffy Harris just did not cover Lynn Swan, and there's the result. Number 12's had his first 300-yard game, his first four-touchdown game, and he's had it here with a sensational performance in Super Bowl 13, and capping off a sensational year. Here's the kickoff. Coming to Bush Johnson. Johnson out to the 20. Flag is down. And he stopped at his 28 with 6.39 to go in this game. We'd like to let our viewers know that the preview of Brothers and Sisters is going to be seen in its entirety over most of these stations at the conclusion of the Super Bowl coverage. A brand new show and one that we know that you're really going to enjoy. They tell me it's going to be a real hit. Two touchdowns. We just spaced it out. Personal foul. Clipping 59 on the run back. Everything's going wrong for the Cowboys. Now, that's the way it can pile up on you. Guy Brown clipping. The two touchdowns were scored in the space of 17 seconds. Pittsburgh scored three, uh, 17 points in 48 seconds against Houston at the close of the first half. 35 to 17. Now Staubach has to perform some kind of magic. Dorsett coming out and is dropped at his 18-yard line by Jack Lambert. What a happy man he has to be. His biggest game ever before his biggest audience ever. Well, let's not, let's not, Kurt, let us lull ourselves into the same viewpoint that, that I'm sure Pittsburgh won't. I've seen Roger Staubach come back and beat a team that I was involved with in the last two minutes, score 14 points before we even got the ball back. So this baby is far from over. That was that famous game out in San Francisco. Yeah, famous to some. <laughs> Infamous to others. Second down, two. Cowboys under 18. Staubach hit. 76 is down a sack. He's there for his second sack. Little stun over there on the right-hand side. Banaszak from his end position coming in behind the move of number 64, Furness. Watch it here. Furness comes to the outside, occupies two people. Banaszak breaks inside. He gets pinned on the other side of Stavak. Now watch him. Spins around to the inside and takes Roger down before he can get that ball off. Four sacks today for the Steelers. A very physical team. He's got his own bunch here, Panasak. 70,000 Steeler fan signatures on that sign, by the way. Third down, 11. Roger has the time. Look at him run, 20, 25. He goes down. He picks up a first down. He's ran very well here in the second half. Jack Lambert finally stopped him. Great coverage, and he just simply had nothing to do with the football but run. But Roger has the kind of mobility and the kind of courage that he said, hey, if that's what it takes, that's what I'll do. 
And of course, the clock is ticking, and time becomes a great enemy of the Dallas Cowboys now. They need to get points, and they need them quickly. It was 21 14 at the half, 21 17 going into the fourth period, and then the Steelers burst loose on two great Bradshaw calls. Is Bradshaw the most valuable player? Well, we'll find out. Swans had another great Super Bowl. Gobbock deep to the sideline, and the pass is caught at the 45 by Butch Johnson, or by Drew Pearson. That's his first catch, Drew Pearson. You can't help but wonder what uh, Stallworth would have done in the second half if he hadn't come down with leg cramps after going over 100 yards. And I think it's a credit to this Pittsburgh team that they were over able to overcome the loss of that greater receiver. They just stuck Theo Bell in there, and uh, and he just picked up where Stallworth left off. Well, that's that's an example of the kind of depth that both these teams have, and the kind of performance they've gotten from second line people today and, and during the year. First down, Cowboys. They're on their 45. They're trailing 35-17. They run a draw play. And racing over the 50. Getting out there is Dorsett. Dorsett's at the 30. And he's down at the 27. Hit by Ron Johnson. And he nearly broke it. And he may be over 100 yards now. Dorsett's not about to give it up. The Cowboys aren't about to give it up. Little draw play. Handed off inside. They're all coming hard on the pass rush. Dorsett gets away. Watch Steve Furness. Big tackle. He's down there, almost gets a piece of, look at it. He's chasing for all he's worth. Ron Johnson comes across, puts him on the ground. Okay, this is what the great backs are noted for. Excellent tackling, but if you get a Tony Dorsett in there, I don't care who you are defensively, you're going to have your hands full, and he's going to get loose. First down, Cowboys in the Steeler 27. Play action pass. Pass is short. And it is complete, I think, at the 16. Complete to the tight end, Dupree, who had to sort of wait for the ball. He had to wait for the ball, but he was in a one-on-one -on -one situation with Taves. Stallback got the ball off in, in, in a sheer survival circumstance. He was trying to go deep down the line to one of his wide receivers. He had Dupree as an outlet man. Taves was all over, but with his back turned to Roger, never knew where the ball was. Gary Dunn is in a right tackle. Shell is being worked on. Tony Dungy's in there. Get that clock. They've already voted for the Most Valuable Player Award, and Terry Bradshaw has won it unanimously. Dallas has not conceded, however. He certainly had a first down and the Pittsburgh 16. Cowboys <laughs> pass. It's complete. Drew Pearson hit from behind by Robin Cole. Oh, he's caught two in a row now, Drew Pearson. Hey, Drew hasn't had a chance to really expose some of the skills he has, but when we see that wide-angle shot, it's great. You see Pearson on the right of your screen. He goes into the end zone. Everybody's covered. He knows Stallback's in trouble, and here he comes back. It's the only hole in the secondary. He finds it and gets the ball. That's why he's a great receiver. Set has 99 yards. Little flipper out to Dupree. Dupree. Touchdown. Billy Joe Dupree scores. And the Cowboys come right back. And you have to say what a tremendous team they are. Not to quit. Down as far as they were. The easy thing maybe just to say, hey, it's over. We can go home. Well, well there's still 227 on the clock, and you can bet an onside kick is rolling down the field shortly from now. They don't they don't quit because I don't think there's any quit in either one of those teams. Okay, Roger gets a little, we used to call it a pick play, where you try to get the secondary people man to man. You try to pick one of them off with your other receiver. He does it effectively. Ron Johnson is shut out of the play, and Dupree comes up with six. All right, Septian will try for the point. It is good. And now we'll look for the onside kick. Two minutes and 27 seconds to go. The score is Pittsburgh 35 and Dallas 24. 
Nipped in, will kick. Now notice all the Pittsburgh men up on their 45. Uh, I mean on the Dallas 45. And they're all players that can move and have good hands to try and recover this little onside kick if it comes. And there it is. And it is fumbled around. And Dallas has it. Dallas has it. Dennis Sturman comes up with it. And I tell you, he came up with a great play because he's sitting there with Tony Dungy, has a first opportunity to get it. He's been a big play man for him interception-wise all year. The ball's coming hard, takes a funny bounce. He picked it off in the, in the air. Now we saw Pittsburgh come in with 14 points and, uh, in just a short time, 17 seconds, and now Dallas has a chance to do the same thing. We don't want to talk too quickly. 2.23 on the clock. A touchdown here, another onside kick. They made it look easy. Went right through Dungy's hands and a great play by Dennis Thurman. That's like they draw it up on the, on the blackboard, isn't it? It certainly is. First Better. down, Dallas on the 48-yard line. Their own 48. 2.23 to go. Dorsett and Pearson are the backs. They'll open up with everything now. The shotgun, Staubach, looks. Throws it on the run, and it is no good. Dupree had it momentarily and then dropped it. And now we're down to 2.16 to play. One thing that needs to be said, not all the Super Bowls live up to the rating of super football. This one has. And I think one of the tragedies of a game like this is that a team that loses in the Super Bowl very often has to carry that stigma throughout the year. The Dallas Cowboys... And the Pittsburgh Steelers have had exceptional years. They'll walk away from this game, and they should both have their heads way high and should be remembered as champions and winners. They wound up the season. Pittsburgh seven in a row. Dallas eight in a row. Second down, ten. Cowboys in their 48, desperately trying to pull this one out. They're behind 11. They have just scored, and they've got the ball back again. Off the shotgun. Robot throws, and it is to the 35 complete. Drew Pearson has it. It's a Dallas first down. Pearson has come alive now. He's caught three late in this game. The two-minute warning. What can Terry Bradshaw do? He's done it all on offense. You show him. He's he's. But inside is where it counts. He's got an awful antsy feeling. He hasn't been on the field for 12 minutes. There's nothing he can do from there. He has to wait until his group gets the ball. The uh, Super Bowl 10 game, 121-17 by Pittsburgh. Dallas put on a last gasp offensive thrust and nearly pulled it out. And we'd like to remind our viewers that the preview of Brothers and Sisters will be seen in its entirety over most of these stations at the conclusion of our Super Bowl coverage. I was here to see that game, Kurt. Matter of fact, it was Mike Wagner who intercepted a Staubach pass to end that one. Let's see if Staubach can get this one successfully into the end zone so they can have another shot on an onside kick. Dorsett and Pearson are the backs. Staubach looks, looks, looks. And he nearly got up, but not quite. He sacked. Steve Furness is a man that knocked him off his feet. Let me correct myself. Glenn Edwards made that interception rather than Wagner. You know, a, a big play of this game now has really loomed is the drop of the pass by that man, Jackie Smith, in the end zone. Wide open, nobody near him. He was going down when the ball came into his stomach, and he dropped it. And uh, that has been a big play in this second half. You're absolutely right, Kurt. It's amazing how 60 minutes of football can sometimes turn on one play. Second down, 20 to go for the Cowboys. One minute, 39 remaining. 35-24, Pittsburgh. And Pittsburgh's hanging on now. Dabach fading deep. Out to the sideline he goes. It's complete. They're trying to get the ball out there to Dorsett and let him go to work. But number 59, Jack Ham, is a hard man to shake away from. Uh, I tell you, it looked to me like Dorsett had just enough room to make the play. Ham was the only man that could shut him down without giving him about a 15-yard gain, and he did it. Where's the time? Dallas Cowboys have made some big plays. Ham made the big play there. Third down, 18. We're approaching a minute to go. Steals in a rookie wide receiver. He'll go for the end zone. It's deep, deep to Tony Hill and over his head. Tony Hill, number 80. He was trying to hit him with a big one, get the onside kick again, and hope to pull it out. Steve Furness. 
He's down. Burness, the right down. tackle. Well, well, Merlin, don't these, you know, when, when, a man, when you know a team's throwing the ball, you're a down lineman, and they're throwing it 10 or 11 times in a row, it has to be physically really defeating. It does that. Uh, Furness has had ankle trouble. In fact, missed a good part of the first part of the year and a, had a freak ankle injury in the warm-up. Uh, he was their most effective lineman last year, but he's come back and played well. He'll, he'll have some time to heal. He's made a good account for himself on the field today. You see him get a pat on the back from George Perlis, the defensive coordinator on the sideline. Gary Dunn replaces him at right tackle. Gary Dunn. So the situation is now fourth down, 18. Dallas ball. It's Pittsburgh's down to that. 38. That's it's right. down to that, Kurt. Chuck Noll looks up at the clock. 52 seconds remaining. These coaches, they could be leading by 50 points, and they're never positive. For any glimmer of hope, though, fourth and 18, this has got to be a, this has got to be successful. Joe Green is being taken out and uh, given a standing ovation across the way. Kurt, I'd just like to take a second to uh, to thank you and John for making me feel so comfortable in the booth. I know that having a chance to uh, work together over the last two years, uh, the last thing you needed was a third voice, and you've really done a good job of making me feel like I belong, and I want to thank you publicly for that. Boy, how you belong, too. Fourth and 18. Dallas behind by 11, 52 seconds to go. He unloads a pass, a crossing pattern, and it is a fantastic catch there. Now they're trying to unscramble him. What a catch that was. That's uh, 23 Wagner in there. They stopped the clock, 41 seconds. People tend to say, well, it was a good try, but this baby is not over yet. Who does he go to in the toughest situations? Drew Pearson working on Tony Dungy. Mike, you see Wagner in the back kind of picks him up. He's not really stuffing him. He's trying to hold on to him. However, it's getting so tight right now emotionally. All kinds of bedlam is, is, is kind of threatening to break loose. I think the players have showed darn good control up to here. I hope they continue. Here's Wagner. Close look at Mike Wagner. Watch him as he comes up. He picks Tony. He picks Drew Pearson up and never lets his feet touch the ground. He's trying to shake that ball loose. Unfortunate that unfortunate that Drew couldn't have got loose. He might have gone into the end zone. Let's say something about the two organizations. Uh, it's amazing. Dallas has had the same owner, the same general manager, Tex Ram, who has never, I, I believe, never received the credit due him, the same personnel director, Gil Brandt, and the same coach. Since 1960, they've been together, that same group. And over on the other side, of course, the grand old man of football, beloved Art Rooney, his son Dan Rooney, Chuck Knoll now for the last 10 years, two organizations who have done it with consistency and patience and built by the draft. And I think the patience is best exposed because both these fellas started uh, Chuck Knoll with 1-13. and 13. When you know that you have the man you want to run your show, you let him do it. I think this patience has exposed itself into two teams that are as well organized as any two in the game. Perhaps that's a good lesson to some of the teams around the league uh, who seem reluctant to let a coach have a bad season if he needs one to grow. They're on the 13-yard line, first down. Dallas ball. Good rush on Starbuck. He shakes away, he throws it, he completes it to Dorsett. He's at the 10. Dorsett is out of bounds on the three-yard line. He nearly went in. Tony Dorsett, the leading ball carrier of all time in collegiate football history. National championship his senior year, his first two years in the pros over a thousand yards and in two Super Bowls. And we're down to 32 nervous ticks on that clock, and it's hanging right there. And Kurt, you know, the action level is getting so severe right now, I may not have a chance to say it. I don't know what the future holds in store, but the last couple of years I've enjoyed being with you. Thank you, John. Thank you very, very much. Jackie Smith. First down, the second down, the yard to go on the four-yard line. No good. No good. Intended for Preston Pearson. Just a little short. Starbuck was throwing off balance. 
Boy, this Cowboy team has not quit. They never do anyway, but how they fought back. And you sit there and you say, second one on the four, why don't you try a running play? There is not enough time. 26 seconds, he knows he's got nowhere to go. He thinks he has a last-ditch chance on this. Every two or three seconds are very meaningful at this critical time. He'd like to have done it on that one. We want to thank Joe Costanza for his research and statistics, Jason Shrinsky for his aid here in the booth, and a mysterious spotter. <laughs> he will remain unknown. Third down and a yard to go. The pass, touchdown! That is Butch Johnson's. Dallas comes back with two touchdowns. They still have time for another onside kick. Well, Cody, <laughs> Cody, you were right. Now listen, it's been a long afternoon, but this man's just as game as they come. He gets a shot late after he throws the ball to Butch Johnson, who comes up with it with the game. At least he's kept them with an opportunity to win. I mentioned earlier, these babies are not over. When you're playing with great people at every position, just a quick break can turn something loose. 22 seconds. I've seen a lot of things happen in 22 seconds. All right, Septian for the kick. It is up, and it is good. And now we'll be back for another onside kick. There's the time. That's the story of the desperate Dallas drive. They have come back with two touchdowns. The last time they kicked off, they had the onside kick. Dennis Thurman recovered it. And they're hoping for somebody to recover it again. John Brody said this would be a high-scoring game. 66 points in this Super Bowl 13. 22 seconds on the clock. Now, the clock won't start until it is touched by the receiving team. So if, uh, if the Pittsburgh Steelers want to, they can, uh, they can almost kill this clock by getting a hold of it, or kill a clock by getting a hold of that ball and running with it. You may see them run the opposite direction. There it goes. Another one. Pittsburgh has it. They recovered it that time. They recovered it. And that's number 20. Good old Rocky Blyer for the Steeler fans who was right on top. Now that would maybe seal a fate. In fact, probably will. All they have to do is drop on the football and it's over. And while we have another quick second, one of the reasons that we've enjoyed the coverage from the booth up here was we've had a special replay unit operating today. Mike Weissman, John Gonzalez have given you folks at home a chance to see some of the exciting play away from the football. And we should mention that they have done a great job for us this afternoon and this evening. Terry Bradshaw, the most valuable player of the game, drops down 20 seconds, 19. You just can't say enough. For Staubach, they pat him on the back. You can't say enough for the Cowboys. Way behind, coming back with two touchdowns. And, of course, the Steelers have lost only two games all year. They have been an awesome team with a passing attack that has been the greatest in the game this year. And their two wide receivers showed it today. And with Terry Bradshaw hitting over 300 yards and four touchdown passes. I don't think I've seen a football team play in a long time, John. And I've been around the game for about 17 years professionally that deserves more to wear that Super Bowl ring than these Pittsburgh Steelers. Tom Landry's had some uh, tough luck in this half. It'll be talked about the wide open pass to the veteran Jackie Smith who dropped it, but things like that happen. Chuck knows about to win his team, the third, uh, first team in history to win three Super Bowl titles. Can and I say something in defense of, ja of Jackie Smith? I don't think one play in the middle of the third quarter turns the tide of a ball game. There's been too many big plays all day long to make one miss the indicator. Obviously, if we put seven points on the board, it would have been the difference. I don't think it was in this game. 17 seconds to go. Again, Bradshaw goes down. And the Cowboys will come in. They look up at the clock. And it's moving along now. They're out of timeouts. The Steelers have won it. The best Super Bowl game of them all. They had a great one in Super Bowl X. This was even better. Chuck Noll goes off. He has won his third Super Bowl title. The Cowboys came back with two touchdowns, and there were 66 points scored. And for those that said that they don't score in Super Bowls, this one showed that they can. They want to get the final reactions from Merlin Olsen and John Brody. 
John, I'd have to say that, again, it was a game of big plays. We thought that both teams would try and establish the running game, which they did. Dallas ran successfully for a brief while. And then the first half became, became a game of turnovers and of great catches and great passes. And, of course, the Steelers got the best of that, able to take some momentum in the second half, carry it on. But the Cowboys would never quit. Well, Merlin, I'll tell you basically the way I feel. Both quarterbacks had great games, utilized their abilities very well. I think whenever you have such a closely matched group of players, a quarterback makes a big difference. I think Brad Shaw played just a little bit better today. I think he's had a great year. It's a perfect end to a guy who's who's taken his, his knocks over the, over the years, hasn't said anything, came back, has run this club all year long, and I think every accolade he's been given is deserved. The Steeler motto, and it's been the same for many years, whatever it takes. And today, they gave that kind of performance. And they got it from different places. They got it from some second-line people. They got it from T-Bell when he had to come in from Stallworth. They got it from special teams people. They got it from Franco Harris. They held him down, and then he got pumped all of a sudden. He said, I'm going into that end zone, and he did. I think it's exciting to see the kind of football we've seen today. Enjoyed being with you and enjoyed being here. Nice going, guys. So the Steelers are the world champs. They win 17 out of 19 this year. Dallas loses. They stop an eight-game streak, but they lost with great courage. And this will go down as the best Super Bowl of them all.